All right. <clears throat> what is up, Storm Chasers? We need to get into this Christian Combs lawsuit. I believe we discussed it or talked about it um, yesterday and then the day before that, but we never actually read the full documents of the lawsuit. So I got it and I am ready for us to get into it together. Let's go ahead and share the screen. Hit share. Let's come back here. Put me down here. All right. Once you guys let me know, you can hear me and see me. We're going to get right into this, people. We're going to get right into this. Shout out to Katrina, Kale, Kasaya. I'm right here. All right. What's up, people? Boom. It jumped up quick. The comments be gone and they just pop up. All right. So we into it. So let's go ahead and start reading. Okay. So this lawsuit, all right, filed in Los Angeles, California, all right, Gracie Omar K, or Omar Kai, is the defendant, good old Wonder Bread versus Christian Combs, Sean Combs, John and Jane Doe's, and ABC Corporations. Complaint for damages, assault, battery, sexually, uh, sexual assault, premises liability, aiding and abetting, intentional infliction of emotional distress and negligent inf infliction of emotional distress and demand for a jury trial. Now, the thing is, when you demand for a jury trial, that means everybody is up for discovery, which means we finna get into all their business, both parties, Grace and Christian, okay? So she ain't looking for no settlement necessarily. She's saying, I want to get on the stand. I want you to question me. And I want your black ass to be able to be cross-examined. People are going to be subpoenaed. Oh, this is going to get ugly. And I am here for it. All right. Grace, uh, we just going to call her Grace. Grace is a European Caucasian female who worked as a stewardess in the yachting industry since 2018. Grace's love of yachting started at an early age. It was a foundation on which she had built her career. Through yachting, <coughs> through yachting, Grace has traveled the world, met many new friends and colleagues, and enjoyed a successful career. What does this have to do with this boy assaulting her? Now I'm gonna keep it real, dude. Don't y'all see how they're like painting her as a victim before we even get into the, the proof. I don't give a damn where she's from and what her, what she loves and what she's into. But nonetheless, baby, when you assault Wonder Bread, it's a whole nother deal. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread news. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread on. We got that Wonder Bread news. We got that Wonder Bread news, and bitch, I held that note. The way she got you by the throat, Christian, okay? And she want that trial, which means she got plenty and plenty and plenty of evidence, all right? All right. So let's go back here. Um, throughout her career, Plaintiff has always worked well in teams and received high praises and great feedback from her managers and colleagues. Plaintiff also consistently received exemplary reviews from her clients for her excellent customer service, as well as glowing references over the past few years. Once again, I don't know why we care, but anyway, plaintiff has consistently received promotions and has never been rejected for any position she has applied for. Oh, so I guess by them saying all of this in the beginning, what they're trying to say is this girl has never had any issues until she encountered Christian Combs because I think the plaintiff, Grace, the white girl, let's call her Wonder Bread. I think Wonder Bread is also suing her yacht company for not protecting her against Christian. And so if she can prove that she's never had an issue until this incident with Christian, this helps her case. Prior to being sexually assaulted by defendant Christian Combs, Plaintiff planned to work throughout the entirety of her career in hospitality and the yachting industry. Unfortunately, those plans have been derailed due to the trauma, the trauma, the trauma plaintiff continues to have as a result of the assault. And look, they got a picture of his dumb ass right there. They building her character 
talked about how everything was going good in her life until she encountered this right here. And we know this lawsuit is fairly new. I didn't even read the date that it was filed at the top before we got started. But we, you know, that's the most recent raid at Diddy's LA house when Christian King, I still don't know why y'all call him King. Why y'all calling them kings with no kingdom? Because this is a kingdom that his daddy built. His daddy built this kingdom on the backs of all the bad boy employees, on the backs of, of, of Biggie's big ass back and dead ass body. But Christian ain't built nothing himself. Oh, that's a good lawyer. Yeah, she uh hired Tyrone Blackburn. Tyrone, Tyrone. Tyrone, Tyrone. Yeah, king of shit. Ain't built none for himself. And well, I would never call you king, you just uh. You was a clown to me. Now, moving on from that. Christian Combs is a 25-year-old, auto-tuned, and heavily edited rap. Wow! The shade! The shade! The shade! Y'all see that shit? Christian Combs is a 25-year-old, auto-tuned, and heavily edited rapper? They put this in a real lawsuit? Are we for cereal right now? Can we shave people? Listen, if we can shave people in lawsuits, I'm going to law school. I thought I was gonna get my PhD and be a freaky ass, be a freaky ass, uh, uh, deviant doctorate. Shout out to Leon. Thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate that, Leon. Appreciate all the donations. I need it over here. Wait a minute. Is shade allowed in the courtroom? I'm going to law school, damn it. I'm going to law school. And then the next line says, unfortunately, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Oh, my God. Shading him and his bisexual bussy popping daddy. They said, shit, the son auto-tune and the daddy is a verse top. Can you put shade like this in legal documents? That's, you can shade! You can shade! Bitch, I'm going to law school. Wait a minute, how that sounds? Storm C. Monroe, JD. Ooh, ooh. If dick sucking ass Kim Kardashian can go to law school, surely I can. You only sink my dick. You seen her suck one. What? I'm going to law, baby. I think I'm going Esquire. Sto oh, Storm C. Monroe, Esquire. Ooh. Ooh. Now, I already got my master's, so do I still list the MBA credentials too? Or would it be Esquire, comma, MBA? Should I? Oh, no, I, I got to add in a C. Storm C, Monroe Esquire. And the C is for check a nigga. <laughs> the C is for check a nigga. The C is for checker, nigga. Checker, cracker. Checker, chow lo main. Checker, two one fool. Anyway, it's from lowest to highest. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh my God, defendant Sean Combs, who has also been accused of several acts of sexual assault, rape, sexual violence, and drugging, among other deplorable conduct, is the father of the defendant. Christian Combs, who has seemingly taken after his father in the family business of reckless partying, drugging others, sexual violence, and other illegal conduct. Man, when it rains, it pours, and they pouring down. Well, did, 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 did Tyrone uh, type this up, or did it? I'm pretty sure his... Um, oh, that's how I go. Hold up. Oh! Thank you, M. 
Where did you get your NBA? I got my NBA from WGU, Western Governors University. Uh, oh, my God. That's how it would look. That's sexy as fuck. Let me uh, hold up. Let me take a picture of that. That's sexy right there. That's sexy right there. Not, not me being a tatted up attorney. Is there any tatted attorneys out there? I'm sure there is because they wear uh, sleeves all day. So you don't know what they got going on on their body. You sure you add to JD? I think it's just Esquire. But anyway, y'all get the point. When it rains, it's pulled because they are dragging him and dragging him for the world to see. Wow. Upon information and belief, defendant Christian Combs resides in the city of Beverly Hills, California in Los Angeles County. All right. So let's keep going. Sorry, ass pappy. Defendant Sean Combs is a rapper and record executive popularly known by stage names Puff Daddy, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love, or Love. Sean Combs became famous in the early 1990s with his record label Bad Boy Records. His roles, his roles to prominence, he roles. He rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly revered as a hip hop mogul and top rap hip hop producer in the industry. Um, upon information and belief, defendant Sean, defendant Sean Combs resides in the city of Beverly Hills, California. Well, he's in Miami right now with his boo, Stevie. During the relevant period, defendants John and Jane Doe's 1 through 10 are currently unknown individuals and or employees who aided and or abetted in the commission of conduct complained of herein and or who either acted within the scope of their own employment. Defendants ratified, embraced and added to this conduct as parties engage in discovery. Plaintiff retains the right to amend the complaint to add these individual employees by name. Oh my. Y'all know what that means? What that basically means is the employees of Denny and Christian that sat there and supplied the liquor supplied the pill, supplied to this, supplied to that, they will be named. And they reserve the right to update the lawsuit with the names. She not playing. During the relevant period, ABC Corporation 1 through 10 are currently unknown entities who employed plaintiff or aided and or abetted in the commission of conduct complaints. So this is the actual yachting, yachting company. So not only is Grace suing Christian, she's suing Diddy, she's suing Diddy's and Christian's employees, and she's also suing her own employer. Oh, ooh. All right, so jurisdiction, let's get past all that. Okay, facts. Boom. In or around July 2022, Grace uh, was working on Victoria's. We are, uh, we, yo, yo, yo. Victoria, <laughs> a super yacht built by a kayak and owned by a uh, owner operated by Fraser. Plaintiff worked as a temporary second stewardess for the company Equion FW 049IC. Plaintiff worked in her temporary position for a month on Victorious, then was subsequently offered a permanent position due to her professionalism, passion for the job, and good customer service skills. Okay, come through. In or about September 2022, plaintiff had been dedicated, had been part of a dedicated team at the Monaco. Monaco, ain't that little G, uh, G, uh, little Genie Ma and uh, Jeezy's baby? Monaco. Oh, I guess that's where they got the name from. Is that a? Is Monaco a city? Where they get that crazy ass name? Anyway, uh, tasked with selling charters for Victorious. To high net worth clients such as Christian Combs and Sean Combs. Christian, and I see, y'all see, see, go back to the drawing table, Tyrone, and, ha and have your assistant, who I'm pretty sure uh, is a queen, because only a queen can read like this. Christian Combs ain't got no high net worth. Why y'all keep acting like Christian is a real celebrity? 
Oh, it's a country near friends. Okay, got it. Christian ain't got no net worth. Diddy got all the money that he stole. I am not going to acknowledge Christian Combs as if he is somebody. He is a nook that made it. That's it. And gave none back to the world, ain't offered none to the world. Um, in December 2022, plaintiff and her team were advised uh, that the yacht had been successfully chartered for the holiday period. Plaintiff changed her personal holiday family plans to accommodate the charter and flew to St. Martin to prepare the yacht for service. Plaintiff soon learned the client who chartered the yacht were defendants, Sean Combs and his family. Defendant Sean Combs leased the yacht and had full control over the staff and premises of the yacht. That's what, another thing about Sean Combs, too. He is a control freak like you need a full control of the staff too wow um let's see all right although plaintiff was used to working in discreet in vip environments this was one of her first times working with an a-list celebrity because of this plaintiff and the rest of her team assigned to the yacht were determined to make the holidays special for defendant sean combs and his family for the duration of the trip Plaintiff was assigned the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift along with one other crew member. This shift, commonly known as the late shift, was very busy. Oh, I bet. Because the freaks come out at night. And so do the uh uh the facts. Late shift duties included dinner and drink service for the clients for the entire 12-hour period. Dinner and drink service had to be carried out with the minimum staff support or back up during the night shift since only two individuals were assigned. Although defendant Sean Combs was always typically on the yacht, his sons Christian Combs and Justin Combs were staying in a luxury villa nearby, but joined their father aboard the yacht most evenings. Damn! So they was literally having orgies and running trains together. Now let's stop right there. Because we have to say allegedly... Ever heard of the Princess Grace of Monaco? You know what? Now that I think of, I think so. That's the one that um that prisoner got got with, right? The biracial dude with the blue eyes that like left prison and and became famous and then left his family. Did he give it to Princess Grace of Monaco? Wasn't he on like her yacht and? Partying with them Europeans? Or am I thinking of some other Wonder Bread? Jeremy Meeks, thank you. Jeremy, yeah. God loved it, y'all, some Jeremy. Soon as he got on, he left his family. <laughs> oh, my God. At least he acting now. He is acting now. But y'all loved it, y'all, some Jeremy. Anyway. Uh, with that being said, what was I fin what was I finna say? <laughs> oh, do y'all believe that um Diddy and his sons ran trains and orgies together? That was the question I wanted to ask. Because I truly believe they have. If they swapping girls and partying together, drinking and drugging together. You say, yep. Can we can we take a minute to discuss what do, how do y'all really feel about that? Because I feel like nobody's really discussing that part. They do everything together, and y'all think they're not running trains and orgies together. What would y'all call and consider that? Demonic, disturbed, okay. demonic okay incest it's a form of it yeah it's a form of incest running trains with diddy aka daddy probably the least troubling thing they've done sadly good point now wait a minute now i want to that's nasty as fuck hey listen brother brothers do it sisters do it why are we not talking about the fact that they probably doing it too? And wait, there's more. 
if they daddy is that freaky and that nasty and that sexually deviant, which we know, we don't even have to say allegedly no more with him being sexually deviant. Is it plausible to infer? Let me not me acting like lead attorney. Is it possible to infer that there is a possibility, or more likely than not, a chance that Diddy has diddled his boys at one point? Teaching and showing them the way. I'm just asking. If they having sex with the same girls together, he's showing them the ropes, he's showing them everything. You know, he's a he's he's a burst top. You think he's ever touched them boys? I'm pushing it now. I'm at I'm pushing it, but they raping hoes. Okay. Everybody saying no. Everybody saying no. Maybe Quincy. Maybe Quincy. Okay. I'm just asking. Seriously. Uh, during the second week of Char uh okay, although Sean Combs was always typically on the yacht, his sons defended Christian Combs and Justin Combs was staying. Okay, we said that. Uh, during the second week of the charter service, there was a significant amount of partying and drug use, which caused the guests to stay up throughout the night. The makeup of the yacht quickly evolved from just Sean Combs and his family to a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and other A-list celebrities, such as French Montana and Cuba Gooding Jr. I see you, Jag. That's the link right there. Wait, just drop the link. Hold up. Let me. Yeah, Cuba is nasty anyway. Cuba is nasty anyway. And we know that. Hold on. Let me pin the link. Okay. Just pin the link. Yeah. It also created a hazardous uh blah blah blah. Okay, according to plaintiff, it resulted in an unexpected increase in workload for her and her colleagues, as well as unwanted exposure to unlawful drug use, sex work, and chaos. It also created a hazardous environment. For example, guests often demanded drink service until 6 a.m. Staff was often treated with disrespect. Suspected sex workers were sprawled out unconscious about the yacht, and it was difficult to distinguish which bottles of alcohol were laced with drugs and which were not. It's also important to note that as a bartender, plaintiff understands the impact of alcohol and the likelihood that a person would not generally become intoxicated following one mixed drink. Because of this, plaintiff found it very suspicious that after one shot of De Leon or one mixed drink, various women of the yacht would be falling over themselves, panicking, or passing out. This led plaintiff to reasonably believe that the alcohol was given to those women was likely laced with drugs. Come on, man. Everybody ain't lying. What's going on, Jag? How you doing? <sighs> this some bullshit storm. They said the 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 girl in the lawsuit saying these girls took one drink and they were out. 
They were dosing water. They were dosing orange juice. Jean Deal has said this. Other victims have said this. Virginia O, is that her name? Jenny O, girl, she yep. has said this. Um, it, 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 what, what are we talking about? What, what, what the fuck is it going to take? Of course he touched those boys. They look like men. It's sad. It's sad to go. Matter of fact, if y'all remember the one girl that came on the show, I she's a YouTuber too, and I can't think of her name. She said she saw somebody stick a needle through the cork in the champagne bottle. The shit. Wait, did you freeze? I think she froze. Okay, I think she froze. Wait, you still there? Okay, I think you froze. We go. Okay, but y'all, y'all remember me saying that the shit is wild. Can you the hear shit. me? Yeah, I can hear you now. It froze for a minute. Can you hear me? Okay, it keeps. Freezing. I'm gonna have you go out and then come back in. I'm gonna have you come back in. Shit's wild though. As soon as she hit the link again, I'll pull her back up. Plaintiff was aware that Rodney Jones, a producer who employed to work on the Love album, was required to be on standby for musical recordings often late into the night. The Love album Off the Grid is the fifth studio album by American rapper and recorder Sean Diddy Combs released on September 15, 2023. Mr. Jones was accepted as an extended member of the service staff and spent time with plaintiff at the service bar and piano room where he played the piano. On or about the early morning of December 28, 2022, the evening shift started as normal. At about 5 a.m., plaintiff was messaged on the on-duty phone that defendant Christian Combs would be joining the yacht by tender by tender, a smaller craft that runs back and forth from the larger yacht used for servicing and supporting entertainment to a private or charter yacht. Defendant Christian Combs wanted to be brought over to Victorious to record in the yacht's makeshift recording studio with Mr. Jones. This is just, wow. This is just pitiful. This is pitiful. Although it was not unheard of for defendant Christian Combs to come aboard at such a late hour, he usually stayed at his dwelling offshore overnight, particularly when there was no party on board on any given night. So no hoes, Christian wasn't there. Defendant Christian Combs arrived in the tender and was heavily intoxicated. Plaintiff suspects Christian Combs was intoxicated from a mixture of narcotics and alcohol. Upon entering the studio, Christian Combs immediately started ordering that tequila shots be poured from a bottle he may have brought onto the yacht. Ironically, defendant Christian Combs was playing Cassie's Me and You. Uh, Cassie was an artist under Sean Combs and was his former love interest who also accused Sean Combs of serious sexual and mental abuse. In the studio, Christian Combs asked the plaintiff, bring the shots to the recording studio Sunday and plaintiff obliged as she was the only serving steward of, at the time. Plaintiff noticed immediately that he was particularly attentive with her, which she considered very inappropriate. However, plaintiff began to become concerned when he insisted that she take shots of the tequila that he brought on board with the yacht. Upon a uh, under pressure and wanting to be polite, plaintiff obliged. Prior to this, the plaintiff witness defendant Sean Combs create a Black Santa video which showed him demanding the captain, various head of departments, and crew take a shot of tequila with him. As this was a pattern established by the captain of the yacht and defendants Sean Combs, plaintiff felt comfortable knowing that Mr. Jones was present and didn't think anything more of it. She felt that she would take one shot and he would let her return to the pantry. According to plaintiff, at this point, the mood changed and things became sinister. Defendant Christian Combs insisted that plaintiff stay chatting and that she sat beside him. 
There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, I had to switch over to a 5G device. Now, what do you think about this part right here? The uh the stewardess on the yacht said Christian came on the yacht from another boat. He brought his own bottle of tequila and made everybody take shots. And she's saying, basically, I couldn't say no. Why is it you can't never tell these motherfuckers no? Because of all that you did to get there. There to that moment. You gotta. What is going on with that? Can you hear me? It's still messing up. That it's like your the internet's going in and out. This is ridiculous. Yeah. I I don't I don't know. And, and the girl and the girl just trying to do a job. Oh shit. Okay, well, you hit the link and come back. I don't know why the internet want to mess up. But yeah, the girl just trying to do a job and it's like she really can't say no. It's like she really can't say no. It's ridiculous. Uh, according to... Blah, 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 blah. All right, she, she made him sit beside her. Then it goes on to say, plaintiff resisted and remained polite, asking to leave. Chris, Christian Combs became aggressive and insisted that the plaintiff take another shot and sit beside him. At this point, Christian Combs violently grabbed plaintiff's arm and began hurting her. He pulled plaintiff to the seat beside him and prevented her from getting up. Plaintiff insisted that she had to return to the pantry, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. Christian Combs forced plaintiff to take another shot. Plaintiff was quite scared and realized she was in a very dangerous situation. Plaintiff was also feeling the effects of the tequila shots and quickly suspected that the tequila was spiked. At this point, the situation escalated Plaintiff started to be physically assaulted by a Sean Combs. He, he touched plaintiff's legs, breasts, anus, and vagina. He also tried to kiss her and proceeded to kiss her neck, face, and hands. The timeline at this point is very blurry and vague to plaintiff as she does not recall exactly what happened due to the effects of the spiked tequila shots. Luckily for the plaintiff, due to Sean Combs' insistence on Mr. Jones recording everything, Mr. Jones has an audio recording of Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting plaintiffs. Now, here's the transcript. Christian said, yo, it's shot o'clock. Plaintiff said, no, I'm not doing shots. Christian? Christian Combs said, everybody, we got to take a shot. I'll just put the lid. Christian Combs, no, 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 no. Take the whole thing. No, you will take it as well. Take the whole shot. This is so forceful. I'm only doing it as long as you take it as well. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not taking nothing. Please, please take the shot. You, you are drugging me? Take the shot. Hey, yo, play another beat one time because now... And then Cassie starts to play the song, Me and You. This is not an offer. You said, what? I can't. I'm, I'm swapping out. I can't do it. I'm sorry, darling. No, we need you. I'm going to stop. Stop. I have to go. I have to go. I, honestly, I'm, like, I'm already losing sleep. I have to go now. You're one of the best on the ship, though. What do you mean? Who's going to replace you? Who's going to replace me? Fuck that. That's going to be trash, though. You feel me? Excuse me. You don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Listen, you and everybody in this crew, it's great. I can't. I have to go down. I have to go down. No. You'll tell me, listen. What? Like, say you just vibing with me the whole time. 
I can't. I promise you. I wish I could, but I can't. Unless I say that you guys requested me. Yes, who can I talk to right now? Who can I talk to? I'm going to say that I requested you right now. Well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Can we take a break? And they wonder why I smoke weed. <laughs> Seriously, though. Seriously. You want to know what's... Mm. Mm. Everything you just read in that transcript is what I lived mm. every day for fucking five years straight. That's how it was. People don't understand. These girls have romanticized this moment for God knows how long. Wow. They're, they're, they're gonna get into the right room and they're gonna get the right deal and they're gonna get the right husband and they're gonna get the right house and have the right kids and this shit is programmed into these girls' minds. It's it's like it's like fucking hunting season. These girls are hunting for a future. So after you put all that effort and all that energy and all of your other failed attempts, and this one is so giving and attached to so much that can be so giving, you feel me? A lot of people rationalize their way into those moments. And the truth is, mm -hmm. they all choose to become a victim in that moment because it can't all be for nothing. I gotta walk away with something. Yeah, yeah. Six years of fucking parties, five years of bad fucking rappers just to get in the room with the right rapper, just to get in the room with the right producer, just to get in the room with the right guy who sits next to the man to make it to this yacht party. And all I gotta do is drink this and hope it doesn't turn out that bad. Mm. That's the rationalization. You know what else I see too? If I'm on a yacht on an island surrounded with nothing but water. There's no somebody, country. Yeah, There's no you. country like, in the water. Thank you. Like you can do whatever you want to do with me and who gonna find the body? Listen to me. The second that you leave port and you make it out of territory water and you out there, that's your country. Mm. Whoever runs that ship is your president. The captain of that ship is your warden because he dictates whether you get off that boat dead or alive. You're right. That's why they love boats. The privacy. And guess what? If it's their boat, they'll be able to pay at least 90% of the people that was on it to make sure they don't ever repeat what they saw. That's for damn sure. Look at Aaliyah. Anybody who saw her carried onto that plane unconscious. Should have been said something. Should have been said something. What I, but what I'm you not know, like, what I'm not like, is, is it's like you can't say no. I'm a grown ass adult. If I don't want to take some, I'm not going to take it. If I don't want to go, I shouldn't be pressured to go. Motherfucker, I said no. This is why Cat said what he said. You can't say no when you get through the door. You got to say no at the door. Mm. See, that's the thing. When you walk through that door, you ain't got no options. 
Mm. None. And the few that get out after they go through that door leave afraid. Because, see, they done seen it now. They're witnesses of the boule. Yeah. yeah like that guy. Like that guy from Miami with the Diddy and the Cassie, the white guy. He said it very specifically. Black people, Shluminati, mass boule, sex workers. Let it out. What is it? What, what more do what more can I say? The fuck you mean? It's like everybody's under a spell because, and I'm gonna ask you about this too. Um, I'll pull up me. This is Kim's son. We talking about this paperwork? It's Kim's son. Yeah. Make it make sense. Said, let this be a warning. Everything that glitters isn't gold. It's really hell not. no, hell no. And let me ask you this: Is Mary J. Blige a slave? Why they make her perform at every damn party, singing the same song, same tired ass dance? Who gonna take Kendall? Oh, that's right. Oh, Jesus. Winter, spring, summer, or fall. <laughs> All you gotta do is call. Call on Mary. <laughs> can do. You know, fuck about that bitch. <laughs> she a goddamn predator. If she had any real discipline, she'd have been Naomi Campbell. She'd been there long enough. And I do have to give you your props for this, too. When you first came on the show uh, back in 2020, yeah. You, you said Mary J. Blige cannot sing. And I had never realized it, but I went back and looked and I said, oh my God, she just be hollering. Like, <laughs> she. Just... I, I didn't know that was a thing. Like, I'm it, it... <laughs> she. I was telling the truth. She <laughs> sounds just as good as Alicia Keys did this Super Bowl with the flavor freak off baby edition. <laughs> oh my god. Alumni. Yeah. Her first her Kicking first song on the piano. Uh, I said, oh, wait a minute. And that witchcraft kick in, you know, help her along. <laughs> I guess they no, forgot I to turn the magic. I, I guess they yeah. forgot to turn the magic on, you know. <laughs> because <laughs> be, people in the chat like not too much on Mary. Now listen, I ain't got nothing against Mary, but She's not a she's not a live I singer. I got plenty against Mary, and I got every right to. Tell me. Because we're, if we're, anybody we're, should be having anything to say about Diddy, it should be her. Oh, yeah. Her response should not be. Leave me out of it. I'm cutting ties. No, it should be. This is the nigga that put that shit on my face, yo. Oh, did he did that? Why don't you fucking tell niggas that Puff put that fucking scar on you? Oh. Oh. You such a good victim. Why don't you tell him about that baby he put in you? And why you couldn't have it? Why don't you tell them the truth about how you went to the, what's his mama named, the Joyce woman? Joyce. What's his mama name? The Diddy Jan man. What's her name? Janice. Janice, yeah. Tell him how you went to the Janice fucking prostitution finishing school for whores. Why don't you tell them how that fucking ugly bitch, that evil bitch, Trains you how to groom Cassie. Trains you how to groom young Miami. You said he was like a brother to you. 
and yet you was knocked up by him. Since when do brothers and sisters do that? Sounds like y'all got the lines confused with when it comes to intimate relations. I, I don't get it. So he forced her to abort that baby? Why don't you ask Mary? What the original Diddy do wop bop? Wait a minute. So it ain't really that she don't want kids. She probably had a botched abortion. I mean, that's what I heard. I heard her uterus is more fucked up than Jill Scott's, and that's bad. Oh, my God. That's bad. I wasn't ready for you. Oh, oh my God. What did Jill Scott do? Oh, my God. What didn't she do, you mean? Fucking polyps and scar tissue everywhere. You know how much money she spent to have Jet? Lots. You know how many times I would sit on the phone with her and cry with her after she would leave her in vitro and they'd have to do more scrapings? I'm never gonna be. Yes, you are, Jill. You're gonna be a mom. You're gonna be a mom, and he's gonna be glorious. That's what I told her. I was right. Shame she had to have it by a nigga. I was fucking, but you know, I guess whenever that medication is, <laughs> you, know, is you know, she had to run with it. Cause she was started. No, she started the medication when she was messing with the African prince nigga when she was doing. The one season only, I don't know how to speak African show on the HBO. You remember? I don't remember that, but I didn't know y'all was fucking the same nigga. Well, she fucked all her friends, man. She would <laughs> hire them first and give them jobs and then fuck them. And then, you know, throw it in our faces. So she's man, like she's Jennifer Hudson. So she, she like Jennifer Hudson. She worse than Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson is a victim of fucking circumstance and choices. Jill chooses this shit. This her thrill. Oh my god! Like when she told me about how when she met Redman and he got an erection and that turned her on, I'm like, you a sick bitch because that nigga wild. <laughs> <laughs> that was that's not a compliment from that nigga. Fucking Reggie <laughs> Nova. The middle school parking lot attendant with no fucking city accreditation. <laughs> like you get turned on by a nigga getting hard for you who gets turned on by little girls. <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> I ain't saying allegedly. Started Blackwood, New Jersey over there by Camden County College. What's up night and day? Fuck you bitches. Goddamn weirdos. I'm sorry. Yeah. I couldn't get turned on by that. Like the whole Nicki Minaj and, and the husband thing. How do you go to sleep next to a man who do the things he do? He liked to use knives during intercourse. Forced, of course, because he, that's the only way he like it. He likes to see bodily fluids that are the red color. While he's engaged in his process, the nigga calls himself Zoo. Sir, why can't you pick an animal? Why do you have to be all of them? <laughs> pick a fucking monster. I don't know. I guess that's where Zelensky likes to play little Roman. I have no idea. At the end of the day, how do you go to sleep next to somebody that's capable of doing those things? And you know that. Ooh -wee. Someone who's been on the sex offender registry list since the age of 16. 16. And he just he updated the enough. registry. He just had to update the registry, actually. Well, I know. We made sure of it. Salute to Jennifer Huff. I love you, doll. 
These are the people we defending? Alleged wow. transvestites afraid to come out the closet? You know, they mad at you for calling Meg the stallion there, right? She called herself the stallion. I called her the Trojan horse. <laughs> That's kinder. <laughs> she called herself a horse with a dick. <laughs> I grew up in Philadelphia. Rocky, the franchise. The Italian stallion. <laughs> a mare is a female horse. A mare. Megan the mare, that could work. <laughs> Why do we need to be stallion? Why was she listed as born a man six years ago on the internet? I don't know. I didn't put it there. Jesus. Why was Tory Lane so quickly turned off? A matter of fact, any nigga she fuck with in this industry so quickly turned off by her. I don't know. Maybe they bump into some shit that they didn't know. I don't know. What was the ex-boyfriend? He did the whole diss record about her. Uh, party, party, partisan. Yeah, and he was like, bitch, I know the real you. And I'm like, which you is that? Well, he said she got some lipo and the nose job. And... Yeah, he said she got surgery. <laughs> you know? Some turned to a off had to kept running back to Kelsey. I'm so done. I'm getting a drink of water. Whatever the case may be, he was cool enough to diss the both of you whack bitches for a Jenna. And everybody know they poison. Facts. But they losing their power. They are. You see them trying to go back white and it ain't... Uh... Timothy Chalamet... Yeah, he let all oh, know how a video and a I must got a call. Wait, did you get a call? Hold it. One second. Wait a minute. Here. Is that better? Yep, yep. You must have got a yeah. call. Yeah, I, I just put it on do not disturb. Okay. Oh my god. Listen to me. Them damn how you how Kim Kardashian let Bieber steal her man. I guess it got in there, babe. I, I, I think so. Were you getting cherry picked by the beaver? The fuck he learned at that flavor camp? You know he played a victim. Hold up. Wait. Hold on, hold on, I want you to see this. Wait a minute. There you go, right there. <laughs> I mean, he was down low, too. Mouth wet. <laughs> now, now, Jag, let me give you pushback. Now, most people going to say, nah, Bieber was just doing a line of coke, and he was trying to be out of, you know, he didn't want nobody to see. And the coke was so strong that it made him drool. <laughs> that boy mouth is wet. <laughs> he on his knees. <laughs> but that, that, that last bump was so strong that it made him instantly drool. I ain't never seen no shit like that. And Trey Song's right there watching. On the lookout. Damn. Nah, they said, nah, Bieber was sucking. Yeah. How Bieber gonna steal your man? <laughs> well, I guess they say Justin sucked the dick better than she do. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> This bitch let be 
but still her man. <laughs> Kanye probably sitting around laughing. Yeah, the video is six years old, but y'all gotta understand you get in the club, you get drunk, you get high, like you get horny. They not think they they really they they not they weren't thinking they got caught. Damn. The guy in the white, that's Odell Beckham. Uh, they said is Kylie pregnant by Timothy Chalamet, allegedly. Allegedly, okay. I think our internet went out. We're gonna go. I'm gonna go back and read the lawsuit till she gets back. Um, according to plaintiff, she said she would have. She said she would have to be requested because she knew anyone of authority who would approve the request was asleep. Christian Combs would not be able to contact them and plaintiff could then leave. After being assaulted in the recording studio, plaintiff attempted to resume her duties that night. She made her way to the pantry where she met another steward who was assigned to take over the shift. Her colleague recognized that plaintiff was visibly intoxicated, in shock and trying to finish the shift. As uh, at such a late hour of the night, there were no spare cabins for Christian Combs to stay in. Despite this, he refused to go back to shore. The most acceptable place for him to sleep that night was in the cinema. Plaintiff directed him to the cinema, which was commonly used as an extra sleeping area. It has one door in and one door out. Plaintiff entered the room and Christian Combs blocked her for exiting. Damn. Plaintiff retreated to a corner of the room. Christian Combs became physical and extremely aggressive. He cornered plaintiff and started to grope her. Plaintiff pushed him back constantly. Christian Combs then took off all his clothes. His penis was erect and he grabbed her oh, arms Jesus. and was trying to force plaintiff to perform oral copulation on him. The plaintiff began fighting Christian Combs and not long after her partner on board entered the cinema. This startled Christian, and the plaintiff was finally able to leave. Once uh, the plaintiff, the plaintiff's partner became concerned and went looking for the plaintiff after she had not returned to her room when the shift ended. The morning after, plaintiff complained to the yacht's captain, Captain Peter Pitar Milko. Uh, captain Milko berated the plaintiff. He lacked compassion or concern failed to investigate and insist that the plaintiff was probably voluntarily partying with the guests. She was not. Captain added insult to injury by assigning plaintiff to work in front of the house, which required personally serving Christian while they were on the yacht. Plaintiff was not provided an option to be isolated or to be able to avoid Christian. Plaintiff was 25 years old at the time of attack. Based on information and belief, Sean Combs employees, including Brendan Paul, Krishna Koran, and Frankie Santella, learned of what occurred and informed Sean Combs. <coughs> shortly, after, oh, Captain Lord, received, shortly after, Captain received the generous tip from Sean Combs in order to keep quiet and told him, wow, and to keep him from protecting plaintiff or taking action on her behalf. Um, Storm, I this is all impromptu. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm triggered, so please give me a moment. Um, please don't mind me if I don't cam up right now. That's okay, absolutely. No, because for the first time, um, in almost six years, I'm so glad Kim ain't around to have to see. This is her boy we, we're talking about. This is her baby boy. Because um, Quincy is the oldest. And it's like, ain't no way in hell with the kind of mother she was that she encouraged anything in him to get to this point. This is, this was all, th th this is indoctrination by that demon fuck faggot father is. I'm, oh my God. He's turning out to be just like his pappy. Now, they also attach 
pictures. So here's the bruises on the girl's oh. arm. Yeah, try to grab her arms to hold her down. Wow. It's time to pay the piper. Okay, when she gets back, we'll pull it back up. Um, let me see. Let me keep reading. All right, after Christian Combs' sexual assault and the subsequent cover-up orchestrated by Sean Combs and the staff, plaintiff was isolated and retaliated against the yacht. This resulted in her termination on May 10, 2023. So this was just last year. In addition to losing her employment, plaintiff also lost her longtime partner with, with, with whom she had a future. Plaintiff's partner was never the same after seeing her uh, uh, bruises on her body because of the Christian Combs sexual assault and having to deal with the mental and emotional ramifications. Plaintiff's mental health deteriorated to the point she was medicated and required intensive therapy. Additionally, she fell into a deep depression and was unable to fully carry out her maid of honor duties at the wedding of her only sister in June 2023. Plaintiff's anxiety and panic attacks prevented her from securing another yachting position in 2023. Plaintiff also developed a severe eating disorder as a result of the attack due to, this, to, due to the shame and mental warfare she was experiencing. On several occasions, the Christian Combs sexual assault led plaintiff to have severe self-deletion ideations. In addition to psychological trauma, her physical health began to deteriorate. She has several epileptic seizures. These seizures resulted in plaintiff losing her ability to do things alone. She has not been able to swim or bathe on her own because now she has epilepsy. The, the young lady is also now facing physical um, ramifications as well as mental ramifications. Yeah, of yeah. Now tell me something. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck was she supposed to go to? Oh, that's a good point. This is why I created WCW. So they would have somewhere where they would be believed, where they could go to. This is why I wanted to go to the government. This is why I asked for an oversight committee with a special prosecutor and a counseling staff and services. Where, where 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 was she supposed to go? There was nowhere she could have went. That's the sad thing. There was there was nowhere she could. And work. anywhere she. Oh my God! Ruining lives, and now they've indoctrinated these kids into thinking that this is the way because this is what they know. Do you know what I hear when I heard you read all of that? Mm -hmm. How many times? Is Sean Combs actually assault Kim Porter? Mm -hmm. well. There are a few stories confirmed. But for that boy to be able to step in that role like that, for him to be able to step in that role, he had to get it from some... How many times did he, you know, and, and, and people talk all the shit they want to talk about. I'll be sure, but he's been saying it for years. You have no idea what she went through. I know for a fact Kim Porter did not raise her son to be capable of doing these things. Like father, like son. It's really sad. It's really sad. And... I remember Gene Deal even saying, you know, he put Kim on a yacht and took her out in the water and then beat the living shit out of her. Yeah, but imagine how many other times it happened when he made sure nobody was around. This is a really, really, really secretive, weird guy. Yep. How many times was it just them and the kids in the Hamptons? 
How many times was it just them in Calabasas? What all is on them fucking surveillance tapes? It's a whole lot of shit. We're not taking other uh, callers at the moment. That link was just uh, for Jag. We're not taking others at the moment. But thank you, though. Oh, my God. My heart is breaking for Kim. Yeah. Because I could only imagine how this would have affected her. I can only imagine how this is affecting the girls. Oh, my God. Yeah. So whole and then and then I don't know if it's true or not, but there's this story going around that Aoki, who's if that's oh, yeah. the youngest, was was spotted with a yeah. grandpa on a private island. Yeah, I talked about that yesterday. They wanted me to ask oh you your God. thoughts about that. There she go right there. Oh, my God. Look at how she posing for him. Look at that. Oh where y'all think he gonna? Where, where, what y'all think he gonna do with them pictures? And and whatever mm -hmm. videos he got out on her, they on an the island too. Do you remember when I was telling you the story about how I used to do the Rush philanthropic events at, at Russell's house in the Hamptons? I didn't know you did. I don't remember that. Yeah. That was the last time me and Kimura actually socialized. You know, me and Kimura were pregnant at the same time. Oh, I didn't know that. When I did the gig, that last gig, um, Dick Gregory was there. Rosie Perez was there. I think Meryl Streep was supposed to come through and Martha, I think Martha Stewart did stop by. Um, it was a really interesting night. Great silent auction. Rosie Perez ran the silent auction and um, Kimura was pregnant. I had just had Sam. Sam was maybe a month. Mm. No, 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 no. He was seven weeks. Yep. And I was asking, you know, Kimura, was she excited? Because she was going to be due at the end of the year. She said, oh, no, I'm having this baby in August. And I'm like, well, how are you doing that? You're like barely five months. And then that's when she told me about how their doctor had been feeding this little girl steroids so that her organs would develop faster so that Kimura could give birth before 30 weeks so she wouldn't get stretch marks. Wow. And of course, Kimura offered me her plastic surgeon. I declined. And that's when I knew it's just this, this, this some bullshit, yo. Dang. Because the truth is, is this little girl's daddy started fucking her mom when she was under the age of 16. Yep. And, um... I know Kimura ain't proud of her childhood, so I can't imagine that she's okay with this. So who set this up? That's the question. Now, this dude here, his name is Vittorio Asafi. He owns the Serafina restaurants. There's in the no city. fucking way in the world these two motherfucking people bumped into each other on some, oh, I think you're great. This was an introduction. Yeah, she was told to him. They say, Kimura, I have the girls. I hope they do, because can't nobody seem to locate Quincy. Mm. These motherfucking kids. Oh. Whoa. These hey, ain't their sins. These are not their sins. Mm. These are not their burdens that they're carrying. She looks and like she, she looks like she's out of it too. I was really hoping this shit wasn't real. Oh no, it's real. It's real. Fuck you mean. There is no way in the world Kimura wants that for her daughter. There is no way in the world. Wait, wait, hold up. Let me show you this here. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. What did you say? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. 
you don't even, <laughs> you don't even have sugar daddy capabilities, right? Aren't you a B? <laughs> of course you are, that. right? I'm just saying, if you don't give me money, I'm gonna go, I don't know, So You're not gonna do any of that. You're just gonna raise your budget. Your budget's fine. I'm gonna be the ambassador for the meat industry. God is watching you. He hears you. I, I mean, I mean, what? your higher self hears you. You know what the, you said. It's this bad. You're not going to do me. that. You're just I'm talking. Kidding, Where's that boyfriend of yours? Is he still around? Yeah, he's not. He's in. He's hiking right now. Watch if it. you don't raise my budget, I'm going to. If it. you don't raise my budget, I'm going to air sugar daddy. If you don't raise. Oh, I've heard that. A lot of if you, times. If you don't raise my budget, I'm gonna get a no. sugar. But imagine him, imagine him acting like he this is just so absurd when he did her mama the same way. You wanna know what's funny? It was inappropriate for him to be talking to her that way in the first place. Yeah. And we, we lost Jam Master J so this pussy could fuck us here and do this shit and hide in Bali. Okay. Yeah, that was a fair trade. I know a lot of people are probably upset at some of the stuff that I had to say about Brittany Garner. What'd you say about Brittany Garner? Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just talking about we got real fucking issues in this world and shit. And I was just thinking about that trade. We got Brittany Garner and we gave away the the one of the biggest warlords of our times like <laughs> like this dude can do anything he <laughs> he can he can assemble all kinds of terrible pow pows with his eyes closed like and we we traded we traded that out from to get the britney back and you know like how did how did her team do did they win what's her boards like Mm. Like I'm just I'm trying to understand the value. Ooh, we. Ain't nobody tell her to take that weed and put it in her bag and not check. They literally told her she could not do it and did it anyway. I'm just saying, ain't nobody tell her to forget. You should have double checked your bag. You might have been high when you packed it and forgot you left it in there. Like I'm just saying, how did how well did her team do? Ain't Ooh. she playing for Phoenix? Now Phoenix did on. they win? Mercury. Did they win? Yeah. Did they win anything? Like, is is she on the next Olympic team? Ooh, I'm just trying to figure out, you know. Let's listen to this here. Hold on. I want look at how thin Aoki is now, too. Look at this. Can you please stop saying I'm anorexic on the internet? Because I've been getting fired from modeling jobs because people think that I'm a bad influence and I'm just really not. I eat a lot of food. Jesus, please she's saying that because I've been getting in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Please stop. Please stop. Um, did you guys hear me? Did you guys hear me? Like, yeah. when you comment that, I get fired. This is giving me Summer Walker because vibes. Because then brands think that I, people. Look how big her head look, Jack. This is giving me Summer Walker vibes. Do you remember when Summer Walker went through this stage? Oh, I do actually. When she got very thin and very and then she emaciated and and she was feeding the baby non-existent breast milk and oh my CBD. <laughs> no, you remember? She said she went, she said the baby was vegan. I didn't know babies were vegan, but okay. Yeah. Mm. And she say a lot. <laughs> it's giving me summer walker vibes. This shit is sick. This does she girl, got a teddy bear? I bet she does. I think that I have an issue and they don't want that on their brand. And so I genuinely have gotten fired because of these comments, guys. Like, could you just please not? Like, I really appreciate it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> is, her, is her panties sagging? It's a draw sagging. I can't, I can't believe she just took her, her her bottoms off. No, no, no. Fuck that. Are the draws sagging? Well, uh, yeah. I ain't got my readers on. Hold up. Those look pretty big. 
That's why I was crying in Milan. Yeah, they are. Yep. Look, look, yeah, look, look, look around her waist. Jesus. Look at the elastic band. Either them those are boy cut shorts. This they hug. Fuck, we looking at. It's some sad shit. And ain't she like a double zero? Oh my god. Legs tiny. Probably ain't having no period no more. Mm -mm. And then the more it happened, the more stressed I got. The more Yo, like her hair looks huge. Like that's crazy. This is crazy. And what's even crazier is that she got a lisp just like her daddy. I didn't know a lisp was hereditary. Wow. The more weight I lost, it was a mess, and I couldn't get a job because of it. So it's not funny. Shamika, they, they did say that. I, I got big fired. <laughs> I got big fired. So, um... Guys, I don't look like I'm dying. This gives a very strong, I literally, I do four kinds of martial arts. <laughs> I rock climb. I can shoot a bow and arrow. Like, come on now. It's, it's true, like there are negative consequences to like a celebrity model, which is true. It's totally better and safer because people aren't gonna like do bad things to you. But because you have press and eyes on you, brands do tend to care about your public image. So if half my comments are full of like, she looks like a dying sick child. I do get fired. I can literally shoot a bow and arrow, dude. I really can. Like, I rock climbed 800 feet vertically. Leave me alone. I have more energy than half of y'all. Half of y'all judging. Not y'all why. Okay. Thank you, guys. Just please, like, comment, like, good stuff. Like, yay. She's really cute. I can buy something. She mm -mm -mm. They drooping. They drooping. So she say, I I I practice, I'm I'm working out like four times a day. First off, you just told us you exercising to pure hell. But look what she about to put on. The beta six kitten dress. Look at this cheetah oh, print. Because brands pay attention to what oh, you comment, God. and I do get like booked or fired. And who's she putting on this lingerie for? In in no, but in the saggy drops. What is they said Zendaya is small too. Zendaya's naturally that way. Zendaya was always tiny. Um, this girl here look like it don't fit her body. Oh Jesus! And and this don't look like a cry for help. I didn't even notice that her, that her, that her drawers was falling off the poom poom. I didn't even notice. Oh, oh I caught that. Storm, we getting ready to go to the beach. Okay. Oh. You, you do your this thing. Any fun. final thoughts before you go? Yeah, we we need to have another sit down. Oh yeah, we gon' we gonna schedule one for sure. We gotta figure that out because this shit is getting it's getting dark. And people wonder why. Do you remember when we first sat back in 2020 and you asked me why I I wanted to sit with you and I told you <clears throat> because you're you're gonna be a big voice for the future and I, I need them to know what the dangers are. Absolutely. I, that was that was the significance 
of us sitting down, someone from my generation, someone from your generation, and hashing through this shit because I'm watching shit repeat and I know y'all are tired of fucking seeing it, you know? And that's where all of this be began for you and I. And, and now we're sitting here looking at this shit called crazy, called clout chaser, called this, called that. And the very reason why we began to sit down, we it just showed up on mm, the trials was sagging the baby so thin. And that's the same baby that Russell Simmons had some Frankenstein doctor pumping steroids into her so she could hurry up and make it out the oven so her mother wouldn't damage the merchandise. This, mm, just from there, from her incubation period to now, so fucking unfair, you know? It's just it fucking unfair. I'm going to jump back down in the bushes. Um, I'm going to continue to watch. You know, I hope you guys, I, I saw that a few more people have subscribed since we sat down. I, I hope those numbers go up because yeah. you people need to understand the dedication and the hard work that Storm has put into creating a platform where you can come and get the real, in real time, unbiased and straight up. And the storm chasers have grown and they've evolved and you've, you've built quite the little network um, that's becoming a big network. Literally. And I really hope that people continue to subscribe, that they get their memberships and join because, you know, this is me being shady. It really is. I'm about to be shady as fuck. Okay. We about to hit what? We we we, we inching up on a, a million in about a week, right? Oh yeah, on that video? Oh absolutely. We inching up. Now there are a few content creators that I've spent time with and created content with. You know? Funny thing is, when me and you do videos, they usually end up with M's behind them quickly. They do. About to show now, everybody. if I spent more time with other content creators than I've spent with you in four years, how come they can't produce no million view videos with Jaguar Right content? I guess nobody wants to watch them. I don't know. Yeah, we had 661,000 views. Yeah, that million's coming pretty quick. It is. Yeah. You know, numbers don't lie. If your numbers ain't looking like this, maybe you should just stop doing Jaguar right content. Oh! <laughs> and, and, and leave it to the people that know how to produce real results. Shout out to Real Life Street Star. Shout out to Hip Hop Uncensored. You know, people with real platforms that get real numbers. You know, Storm, I was doing a little research. You know how I'm a geek with it now that I'm all in it and I'm always checking the analytics. And you remember how when I sat on the blue couch and I was talking about Sweetie and how she had all of these followers, but it wasn't turning out in revenue, remember? And I was like, less than 1% of her subscribership was following her shit and buying her shit. You remember? I remember. I found that same trend with a content creator here on YouTube. This content creator has 1.1 plus million subscribers, has been around for approaching the 10 year mark soon. And with 1.1 million subscribers, I just wanted to break down a little math. 10% of that would be 111,000. 1% of that would be 11,000. Right? Right. That's straight math. Now, 
rendering the analytics and engagement, if you got a platform of over a million plus subscribers, you should be getting at least 10% showing up at almost every live. No way. Am I wrong? You would think so. At least 10%? That would be 111K in a live. Now, let's just say maybe you're you're trending down, but you're stable. You're definitely going to get 1% every live. That's 11,000. But do you know what I discovered? What did you find? <laughs> With this particular content creator, they're barely cracking 8,000 on a live. Over 1.1 million subscribers. And less than 1% of your subscribership shows up to watch your shit. Less than 1%. 8,500 as of a day and a half ago. It's less than 1%. 1% is 11K. 11K. <laughs> K. You do a lot of K. You don't do a lot of M. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. K. You do a whole lot of K, but you don't do a lot of M. Even when you got to pay M's back. Y'all motherfuckers want to talk about numbers? Talk about them. I guess them bots is getting expensive now that you're trending down. Because if you as hot as you say you are, and if you as good as you say you are, I want to see you do this man's honest numbers. Oh, Just one laugh. One laugh. Trans Rena. Okay. Oh. 1.1 million. And you can't even get 1% of people to show up to see your shit. Guess they notifications ain't on. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Storm. That one's on me. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, I just wanted to congratulate you because the truth is, it's not just Jaguar Right that makes that number happen or Jaguar Right hashtag. You're just fucking awesome at what you do. And the truth is, is you do those numbers without me. And you've done those numbers without me on a many of occasion. But see, when we get together, this is, you know, magic happens. You know what I mean? It's it does. It works. It just works. It works. It works. And you know what? Obviously, it's not working for everyone who tries it. Because oh, yeah. there's plenty of people that didn't had all kind of sample. And they still stuck in the world of K. <laughs> Shoot, there's some of them right now that need to, they mm. need to go to sucking dick because mm. this thing works. Ain't that how they got there? <laughs> <laughs> I guess they can leave how they came. <laughs> yes. Boy. Fuck you all. Y'all better stop hating on Storm. Best thing I ever did was sit down with this young man. It was an honor then. It's an honor now. Just like it's an honor to look over your shoulder and, and, and see that graphic there in the background. The celebrity doctor. That's how I met you. Oh, thank y'all. Oh, yeah. We've come a long way, haven't we? We have. Long we way. Have. I think Let's for keep me, busting they fucking asses up. We will. We will. And I think, and I think the best part of all of it was certain people, I'm not even saying no names, because they ain't even worth it. Not at all. They said I was done. I'm irrelevant. I'm a nobody. I'm this, I'm that. Mm. Mm. Ain't that, ain't that something? The devil is a lie. The shit that people say. 
<laughs> well, to know what though, they saying it behind your back. Yeah. Fuck them. And um, you let me know when you're ready for us to have that uh that follow up. Oh, absolutely. I got a feeling something really interesting is going to happen this week. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love. love. Go on ahead and get back to it. Like I said, I'm in the bushes. How much more of this document is left? Uh, we did the majority of it actually. Okay, I just wanted to know if I needed to roll a blunt or a joint. No, no, no. You're good. Yeah, we did the majority of it. Okay, all right. I'm in the bushes. Love you all. Into the storm chases, the mod squad embraces you. We had so much fun with you in the chat. Can't wait to do it again. Shout out to all of the real relevant YouTubers. <laughs> and shout out to Storm Monroe for giving you real content from a real place, from a real person. I'm out. Peace. Peace. All right, so we're going to go back to the document, finish up here. Let's see what we got. So we got. Um, boom, 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 boom. We read the majority of it. That's pretty much it. Everything else is just, yeah. I mean, yeah, everything else is just pretty much repeated. So listen, at the end of the day, this girl, Grace, the plaintiff that is suing Christian and Sean Combs and everybody that was on board, she was simply trying to do her job. She was forced to drink tequila that was spiked, assaulted. Her life was ruined behind it. And now she's wanting damages. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the link so people can call in, put it back. Did I put where well, the link should be up still? Okay, so the link is actually already pinned. So people can go ahead and hit it. I'm gonna give y'all a little time for comments. And then we out of here. We out of here. I gotta go to the gym. Cause uh I think we gotta work out. Okay. It's still pinned. Okay, appreciate it. So I had to use this bathroom, so I'm gonna um I'm gonna have to play some in the meantime. Oh hell, I'll be right back. Shit. There we go. Okay. What's going on, Loki? Hey, I wanted to talk about um I wanted to talk about um Oh, you gotta turn me off in the background. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about Jay Z. You gotta turn me off in the background. I turned it off. Okay. I wanna talk about Jay Z canceling that Rock Nation brunch. Ooh. Jay Z canceled that Rock Nation brunch one because of the um <clears throat> Diddy stuff that's going on, but there's there is also another significant reason. If anybody was paying attention to all of the things that took place within that time frame, that was um right before the Grammys. Okay. So um a couple of weeks before that, remember Yo Gotti's brother had gotten um unalived. And you know that 
they say he got unalived because of his involvement with the unaliving of young Dolph. And <clears throat> so, you know, your God is always at that brunch. Right. And um, along with the Diddy stuff going on, and then Yo Gotti's brother getting unalived, um, it was a lot going on. So in order to avoid the potential backlash, instead of uninviting them or still inviting them, where either way he would get some sort of backlash because the public would be looking like, you know, why didn't he invite Yo Gotti this year? It would look strange. Why didn't he invite P. Diddy this year? It would look strange. So in order, and if he did invite them, it would really have gotten like blown out of the water. So in order to avoid all of that, he just canceled it altogether. But now this Made in America festival has also been canceled. What is going on with Jay-Z? Is it the Kathy White stuff no one wants to talk about? Could be. Is Could he be involved in the unaliving of Young Dolph along with Yo Gotti. I heard it was 1.5 million that was put on Young Dolph's head. Oh my god. Okay. It's so cold. It's a lot, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that people are not willing to speak upon. And I said, well, I'm going to blow it out of the water on Storm Monroe show. Mm. Because um, there is something shady as hell going on with Jay-Z right now. The reason why he's also, I wanted to pinpoint this out really bad, really quick. The reason why he's going to get away with everything that he's done behind the scenes, he's dirty. Like Jaguar says, very calculated, a monster. And he's going to get away with it because those higher-ups and the, 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 the machine has to keep Beyonce's image clean. Mm. Nothing attached to her can be publicized and um, ridiculed. Nothing can be um, solidified as actually true. They're, they're, you know, we're saying he's going, he's next, he's next, he's going to be um, exposed next. Um, Storm, I, I highly doubt it. And I hate to say it, but I want to be a realist about these things. It's not going to happen because he is the husband of this generation's Michael Jackson. It's not going to happen. Well, we will, def we will definitely see. I'm going to let you finish up low key, then we got to move on. All right, but yeah, I just wanted to speak upon that dirty stuff going on behind the scenes. Rock Nation brunch was definitely canceled, not only because of Diddy, but definitely because of his ties with Yo Gotti. They have a $32 million deal together. He doesn't want his name in the Young Dolph unaliving, but he is involved. Ooh, have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye now. All right, for everybody coming up, we're going to have a two-minute time limit to speak. So next we got Sh oh this is St. Louis girl. Hey, what's going on? What's up, friend? I came up here because I sent you a message. But yes, I and I really forgot. I actually I forgot to listen to it. So remind me, what's what's up? What's going on? Okay, so my my thought about Diddy is this. Now we putting the freaky shit to the side. We putting that to the side because we we're learning that sexuality is fluid. No, it is not right what he was doing to them people, and no, it is not right what he's passing down to his sons. Now, with that being said, the other thing I'm gonna say before I say what I came here to say is, I can't wait to what's the uh what's his son not not LB Shore's son, the other one, Justin. The, is that the pretty one with the curly hair? Yeah, yeah, the one that's you know Wolf son allegedly. Okay, that's what I that's what I was finna say, but I wasn't sure his name. Um, I'm waiting on his mama to come on out here and do some talking. That's who I'm waiting on. Now the other thing about her, if she come out here and do some talking, I need her to have protection by Jag or whoever else because that lady know what's up. 
And she's the one that's going to pull the pin and say something because she coming out to protect her baby. Mm. And remember, she spoke out when Justin Combs had caught that DUI and said, uh -huh. I can't take this. He's always drinking and partying with his daddy. His daddy's not a good example. And then Diddy told Misa Hilton, he told her, you should watch yourself. Ooh. See? See? Yeah. But now... Here's what I think, where I think this stuff started. And I ain't even going to call him Diddy. I'm going to call him Sean. That's what his daddy named him. <laughs> Sean, I believe that the reason why all of this stuff started in his head went before he got the fame, before he got the notoriety, when he was just funny looking Sean that liked the dance in the Andre Herrera videos. Mm -hmm, yeah, that one. Um, I believe that when his mother and maybe his daddy's friends broke down how his daddy was a gangster and the way his daddy was and what happened to his daddy that got him up out of here, I believe that he took on the persona of his daddy. Oh. And I think that this is where the ball started to roll. That he wanted to take up his daddy's, you know, place and take up his daddy's shoes and be the gangster or the kingpin that he thought that his daddy would have been. But he, in turn, started to mess over people like Jag and them said he messed over Biggie. He started the beef between Biggie and Pop because I think that they weren't beefing as tough as that he wanted them to be. And what happened is, just like everybody know, when it's three friends, one and two going to get along. But if the third one feel like they the odd man out, the third one going to sow dissension between one and the other so that they can break it up and they'll be the one sowing dissension between the two. Mm. So I think he did all of that so he could sow dissension between the two and then get that money because they said, um, on, now this is on the TikTok, they said that Biggie was getting ready to get his money and get his stuff from up under Diddy. And yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Even even Gene Deal said that. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, now I wait, think, now, now hold up. Let, let me stop you there. This is his pappy right here. This is him, right? That's Janice Combs, and then that's they holding Diddy right there, right? That's Sean. Uh huh. That, that's Sean. So I didn't never know his daddy was light skinned. I didn't know what his daddy looked like until we got into his business and saw his daddy. I did not. I but wonder that, if that's also why he's so attracted to light skin men. I didn't know his daddy was light skin. It could be. It could be. Now, I also think that it goes to uh to due diligence to do some other um oh, he looked like his daddy right there. I think that it also says that we should also go into looking at uh his mother. His mother ain't uh innocent neither because mm -hmm. she was also telling him you know what moves to make and what things to put in her name and i will put money on the fact that she made him put those houses in them kids names so that if anything happened them kids at least got the house the stuff that's in their name or whatever the case may be I, his mama not his mama not innocent either Nah, now, she not. do and she I, know all of what he was doing with them kids or, you know, all of the freaky stuff that's going on? Probably not. But is she a coach? He get it from anymore? somewhere. He get that freak from somewhere. Uh, light skin right here. That's <laughs> probably where he got it from. From light skin. He get it. He get it from somewhere. <laughs> He probably got it from light skin because uh, one of them little TikTok said that it was a question because look at look at the genetics. Now, genetics is something you that you have to study to understand because I know twins right now. And it's funny that I'm looking at them, uh, his mom and dad. I know twins right now. The mother looks like his mother right there. Their father is light skin like that. One twin is dark skin with the shape of their dad. 
The other twin is light-skinned. She has the shape of their mom. But their twins came out same time. But they split. And if you saw them together, you would never imagine that they were twins. Ooh, so it, it's, it's, it goes to say, is that his daddy? Oh! Hey. You got to look. You got to Oh! Be. Mm? Wait a minute. Mm? Think about it. Oh, now think about it. Shout out, shout out to just Mama like Diddy Daddy. I don't know. I don't know. Shout he out. his shout mama don't his mama don't look like she know uh no no plug chicken either. His mama look like she know how to handle it and what to do, when to do it, and where to do it. At. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, they 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 come from the streets. They they come from the streets. It just it is what it is. I'm telling you, hmm. It's some about the ones that moved around before us. It's some about them. It's some about them. I'm telling you. Mm -mm. It's some about them. Because now this is my last comment. I'm looking at that. Now that's uh, Diddy and his, and his mama, huh? Let's mm. also, let's also, uh, we're not going to brush past those mothers that lose their husband early on and they take on that mother, girlfriend, wife role over their son because mm -hmm. the husband is gone. My people just went through that with his mother. His mother put him in the place of her husband when her husband died. He had to pick up every bill that his daddy had to pay those bills that his daddy had because the daddy died. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Let's let's think about it. Let's leave that there. I'm gonna go back and listen to that voice note you love me too. That's what I. That's the voice note. This was. What it was, it was the, okay. That's why I called. The, that's why I called in because I really wanted to hear what you had to say about it. I'm because, just. But I'm. I'm just saying it's very possible because now that you think about it, he get that freak from somewhere. You know, he ain't no wrong with him loving his mom, but don't get me wrong. But <laughs> she never remarried. She never. Like. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we don't know too much about her business at all. I thought that I heard from somewhere, being very honest, I thought that I heard somewhere that she was, um, that she had like, she was a maiden. Oh, mm. I, mean, I mean, not a maiden, a madam. And she had had a little business going on um, in the back of NYC where they, you know, where they lived there. I thought that that's what I heard. Well, I'm going to keep it real with you. She definitely has the look of a madam. She has that energy for sure. Uh, okay. I just wanted to make sure that you saw what I saw and we see what we seen at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, now, last thing, and then I'm finna hang up and go back in the bushes, as Jack said. It's something about, my grandmother told me this a long time ago. I used to play and dye my hair, bleach my hair blonde. She mm -hmm. said, it's something about women that bleach their hair blonde and they wear it and they look good with it. Some women play with it and they leave it alone. Women that keep it and they keep it up and it look good on them and it's their staple, it's something about those women. It's something about those women that can carry that and carry it well and that's their thing. She said, you got to you gotta watch those. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. And it never, like, it never, that thought never left me. So when I see women with their hair dyed blonde and it looks good on them, I always be like, mm, you know, what kind of freak are you? Oh! Uh, <laughs> not, not like they used to say back in the day, red was the color of whores. Not that they say that it was yeah. blonde, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming up. You have a good one, all right? All right, I'm going back in the bushes. Okay, bye-bye now. Oh my God. Yeah, Nina said if you read down that court case, Diddy pulled down his pants in front of his mama on that boat. She said, nothing. What? 
What? Pulled down his pants in front of his mama. Ugh. I couldn't because um, I don't know. That's no. Um, Pussy Cat Talk Podcast. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. So it's interesting. Um, I was listening to what she was saying. If folks don't know, his mother used to run fashion shows, right? And in the right. back of those rooms of the fashion show, it was a front for the original freak offs. Because in the front, yeah, in the front, it was fashion shows. She would hire girls. And the reason why it stopped is because one of the Johns had actually killed one of the girls. Yes. Yes. One of the girls got killed and that's why it stopped. So it kind of, so again, if you think about it, if you, if you think, where did he get it from? I believe that that's his father because his mother is really actually dark skinned. You know how as black folks, we come out with different melons. I don't think that's a different father at all. His father was actually informant. Uh, Diddy, of course, mm -hmm. is an informant as well. Uh, those individuals are concerned with, you know, the reason why uh, Jay-Z ain't said nothing is because he, again, one, he probably pissed off to find out that Diddy had videotapes in every single room. So that's one. So mm -hmm. he already know Diddy is an informant. When he uh, allegedly killed Tupac, please understand Tupac was going to reveal to him, reveal that he was on the down low. So that's one. So that's why he ended up having people were like, oh, they would love her. No, he was going to expose him. That's why it was so much war in him with. And I can say that because we used to do the photographies. So they would come in here in Atlanta and we would see them all the time. So it's just like, wow, when I think back with the Biggie Small situation, Biggie, remember, Mace went out and had was trying to get Cameron to sign with Biggie's new label. Mm -hmm. why, why Biggie sit up here because he wants to. So why Biggie of all people want to separate himself from the guy that's been helping him the whole time? So there was some distinction between that. On top of that, Puffy was sitting up here beating up on Kim. He was beating up on Faith. And the word on the curb is even Mary was messing with somebody that was underage that was actually 17 years old, allegedly. So even okay. though she so even though she tried to separate herself, you you know, and I don't know if that was a situation where you didn't know that that person was underage, because again, people don't look their age, you know. But he was seventeen years old, okay, and he has even come out and said that he was seventeen years. Danny old. boy, right? Yes. Wow, I remember that interview. Oh wow. He even came out and said he was seventeen years old. All right. So let's even roll it back even more. Then you got um, and I'm going to keep it because I know I got two minutes. Then you got the uh, R. Kelly situation. Right. Mm -hmm. R. Kelly. So it's like Jay-Z separated himself from R. Kelly. Yeah, he did. Dude, y'all was doing stuff together. Y'all was Fiesta, Fiesta. Are you serious right now? Y'all was doing stuff together. So there's no way. So now he's sitting up here trying to separate. And so he was so mad. So this, I got to say. So the part about Chris Brown, and I know he don't have anything to do with this. One of the reasons why Chris Brown was blackballed is because Jay-Z was messing around with Rihanna. Rihanna ended up getting herpes. Herpes that um, Jay-Z gave to her, and he, she ended up giving it to Chris. But where did Jay-Z get it from? From the freak-off parties that they was having with P. Diddy. Oh, shit, Lee. Okay? Think about it. So Jay-Z was like, I'm going to destroy your career if you expose Chris Brown and Rihanna was in the fighting because he was like, there you go, sucking off somebody else. And she was sucking off on um, Jay-Z. Okay. 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 Allegedly. I'm following you. But this is the reason why Jay-Z was trying to blackball Chris. Think about it for a second. Because Chris, you remember, Chris ain't with that. He has been adamant about, 
I do not do homosexual um, uh, uh, activity. Remember, he's, and that's why he was fighting with the guy, the rapper that was gay and this, that, and the other. You know, he's never been in that particular situation. So because he was going to expose Jay-Z, which would have took it on back to P. Diddy because of the parties that they were having, but that is the reason why that situation happened. Damn. So when you think about all of the, all of it is a trail. It's like, it's all leading back to Jay-Z. It's all leading back to P. Diddy. It, P. Diddy sitting up here with everybody's secrets. <laughs> he got everybody's secret. He ain't going to jail. This was a slap on the wrist saying, Muffo, we can get to you at any time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Understand, we're going to embarrass you. So what does he care about? He care about his money and his reputation. Not to say he don't care about his family, but he care about his money and his reputation. So if you take those two things away and then take away his freedom, I don't think his freedom because some, remember, he has been riding for 30 years getting off because he became an informant when they tried to arrest him for Tupac. Allegedly, and, uh, and I was even giving that to that he is an informant. Bottom line, yes. yes. So all of the stuff that he was doing basically gets washed away. But he pissed off them Dillion people, which is a company that's been around since eighteen hundred, the liquor company, talking about races, and they almost the course was going to side with them. So they said, you know what? This is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. We finna take you down from without because we know because they've been at them parties too. Think about it for a second. Okay? If he's the face of that Ciroc liquor company, okay, and you said, well, you, he's like, well, you know what? I'm finna go ahead and reveal everything. Okay? They say, what? What you say? You finna do what? Oh, okay, we know how to get to you. Let's go ahead and dig up the people that was at the parties and let's get them to sue. Let's back them up. Okay. So if that happens and then they're feeling Diago, thank you, sweetheart. If they're feeling um, vindicated, you know, they're like, okay, we're just going to take them down from within. Remember the case with him suing is on hold. They haven't dismissed that case, but when the Cassie situation came out, that's when it all went on hold. All the court stuff went on hold. And so everything been falling apart ever since. Exactly. So they're like, we're going to slap your hand. We're going to show you that we can get to you. At, and you think you got stuff on us. We got stuff on you. And we finna make it fall from the foundation down. So whether it's rumors, whether it's, um, you know, we know that he done some stuff. Okay. You know, I don't, as far as sex trafficking. Mm, well, and that, and that child Justin ain't his. Okay. That's Wolf's. That's Wolf's, okay? If you pull the pictures up of Misa and Wolf and Diddy, <coughs> remember Diddy has strong genes, okay? All of his kids that are his kids have something of him in them. That if you pull up Wolf and Diddy side by side when they were in the car, then you pull up Misa and Justin together, you will see that that is not his child. And I forgot who it was. It was Craig Rock. Who was it? It was Craig Rock. They were, um, it was like, and it was a picture that was leaked when Justin was a baby and they quickly got it off. The, and I had it and I can't find it now. But it was showing, it was showing Justin as a baby. And one of the guys was looking at him like, that ain't your kid, <laughs> you know? And it, and it was like, and it was two other rap guys. I can't remember if it was Craig Mack or something else, uh, and it was another person. But it showed Justin, it was right after Wolf had gotten killed. That ain't his kid. He wanted Misa. He was jealous. He was jealous of Wolf because Wolf had Misa. Okay? That's and what that can, was all about. And look at him right here. I mean, you can see clearly. That ain't his kid. That's Wolf's son all day long. All day long. So they've been lying. And so it's like he's trying to take. Yeah, but it was Craig Matt, but it was somebody else in there too that was looking at him like, are you serious right now? So you're just going to take these kids? And even with I'll be sure, right? We all, so it also makes me think that, you know, the word on the curb is he also poisoned Jamie Foxx. Okay. 
Oh, I forgot about that rumor. Oh my God. Okay. I'm so glad so, you came on the show. I forgot about that. So think about how Kim died. Think about how I'll be sure was poisoned. And if you saw some of the pictures of how bad he looked, like it was it was really insane. They showed him in the hospital and how bad his whole body looked. And then think about what transpired. Remember, Jamie Foxx was on the brink of death. Remember, Jamie was like, I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing about what go on. OK. OK, think about that for a second. All right. So all of this ties together. And then he's sitting up here getting everybody in compromising positions. And remember what he said. I can sit up here and get you an award. How she sit up here and get talk show thing award. Not him. Not not Jamie. You got to pull the one up with I'll be sure. And how bad he doesn't even look like the same person. OK. He does not look like the same. He looks so bad. He came back from the break. He was, they said 95% of people die of what he had. So he was kept alive by the grace of God because to tell the truth of what transpired and he was poisoned and everybody from Uptown Records, uh, that ain't even the picture, baby. Dang. That ain't, that ain't even, a, it's, it's him awkward. laying in the bed. He's laying in the bed. He looks so bad. That he does not even look like the same person. He does not look like the same person. And so it's crazy because back in the day when we were sitting up here doing all the photography here in Atlanta for all of the nightclubs, and to yes, baby. Yes. Do I've you never, see that? I've never seen that picture. Look at the one of them trying to the one right next to it. The one right next to that one. I'll be sure shares. Yes. You see, do you see that? Do that even look like him? Dang. He was on the brink of death. So whatever concoction that they made up, and that's kind of if you go back and look at Jamie Foxx when he first his whole face down in here, it was the same poison that he gave him. It's the same one. Okay, allegedly, I want to make sure I say that allegedly, because anytime somebody, as we know, wants to speak out and say, and that's why Kim, Lil Kim ain't said nothing. Y'all ain't heard nothing from Lil Kim. Claudia said his organs started to liquefy. Thank you, Claudia, because that's what I was going to say. They said it was liquefying. So whatever poison it was was liquefying his whole internal organs. But wait, you know who else that's making me think of? Bernie Mac. What the fuck did they get Bernie Mac? Uh, well, you know, he had sarcoidosis, okay? So his his lungs were always filled. So people with sarcoidosis, they they really have a hard time. So I, I don't think he his was, you know, if that's the case, then we need to bring up Steve Harvey if something happened with Bernie Mac, if we're going to go that route, okay? All right? Because he was straight jealous of Bernie Mac. Think about it. He was trying to get him off Ocean Eleven, allegedly, when he called up there and said, I can do that part instead of Steve. OK, instead of Steve, you know, and he was mad because he was getting all the accolades and this, that and the other. But remember, Steve said he was selling soul for ten million dollars, you know, so but that's a whole nother situation. Oh, my God. You don't remember him saying that? I remember him saying he would do anything. Wait, did I pull that up? Hold on. Keep talking. I'm going to look for that. Cool. I was gonna say, he said it. He literally said that, okay? So when you sit up here and think about it, it's like, <sighs> we want to get out so bad, but then there's a level, I can respect Kat on some of the things that he said, for sure. You know, I can't, you know, this is the year of revelations of everybody being revealed. Jay-Z, I, you know, he going down, he, I don't know who's worse, him or, or Puffy, to be quite honest. J and, and Jaguar was right. He is definitely a lot more calculating per se, because think about it. Look, think what he did to Aaliyah. You can't tell me Aaliyah didn't even want to get on the plane. She was doped up before she even got on the plane. They gave her a pill. She OK, was. allegedly. So she didn't even know that she was getting on. How old boy going to offer the plane and y'all don't get on the plane and y'all try to put all this on this plane knowing that it was too heavy. Come on now. So you want to you want to Beyonce that again? She's not complicit, okay? She's not complicit. 
You knew what was if even if you try to act as if you didn't know, you knew something was going on behind the scenes to help you get there. So who had to be eliminated? So if if uh, P Diddy, Puffy, Sean Combs, Brother Love has this information, Jay Z trying to go over there and put everything in place so he can separate himself, just like he separated himself from Mark Kelly. Okay. All right. So now he said, they're like, where, where he at? Everybody talking. Stevie J talking. Pity that uh, other boyfriend, he talking. Okay. You know, he's defending him. You know, then you got the one that used to date Lil Kim defending him saying we shouldn't judge. I'm not saying that there isn't an engine behind the regime. There is because it's too many black men that are they're trying to pull down and to distract about what's going on with the election. I think it's all tied together as well. Okay. Yeah. I, think, I think it's all tied together because of the black folks. If they're not paying attention, if we ain't paying attention and we so concerned about this, we ain't concerned about that. So I still think that it's all tied together. But at the end of the day, Puffy has done so much dirt that he cannot be absolved. But he will get away with it because he has so much. Or if they found the tapes, which I can't see how they found the right tapes. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. I think he got them things hidden in a vault somewhere that it cannot be found. Because remember, the pl and I think also, too, when the plane was turned off, when they turned the box off and they couldn't identify where the plane was, they were dropping stuff in the ocean. Oh my God! Yes, because okay. he wasn't even on the fucking plane. Right. I feel like they were dropping things in the ocean on that behalf. But let I'm gonna say this one last thing on this: Ooh. the regime is definitely behind this whole situation of bringing down people of color. I don't care whether they did whether the people of color did something wrong or not. Okay, there's still a regime behind t of doing that, but. Because their hands are not clean, it makes it easy for us as people of color to look bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? It makes it easy because we've been dangled the carrot of you can be financially free. You can sit up here and do what you want to do. You can have everything that you want to have. And then you're selling your soul. You're like, OK, I can give up the booty hole. OK, you know, I, I, I'll just put some uh, ice pack on it when I get home you know, and didn't nobody see me do it. You know, so uh, I can you know, I can do this just this one time and not realizing that this fool got tapes. So now you're going to do whatever he want. You're going to sign whatever, you, you know, whatever he tell you to do. You're going to take whatever money he say you can have. And the question on the curb is, was it really Saucy Santana that he was dating and Karushi was the front? Because I could have sworn I saw a picture of him getting uh, Saucy in the, in, in the booty hole. They showed a picture of that. You know, that's what I saw. It was some it was some sex tape that leaked that they mm -hmm. never talked about again. And, and, and Saucy was like, no, nah, that that wasn't my coot. That wasn't my booty bean. But listen, they got little ways of putting you in your place. This was a way of covering. This was, in my opinion, Kar now, I'm not saying he wasn't boning uh, Karushi as well, Karisha as well. Okay, I just think that that was a front from him to get the boosie from Saucy Santana. Okay, allegedly. So no matter what, it all ties together. I, I want to tell y'all something else too. The girl, the the lady, because she, she's a she's a grown woman. Who was in the industry sold a movie and then she said they was trying to run trains on me at the meeting just to talk you know she said especially and she showed me the deposits five hundred thousand two point five million one point five million like real bank deposit i've never seen that kind of money just be deposited in the bank anyway she said if you really also want to look at who deal and who trade and who bisexual in the industry she says storm you gotta look at the male strippers as well, the male strippers and the adult performers, because they throw a lot of the parties for the men in the industry too. I, okay. I told you I'm in Atlanta. We already know. Okay. I, I, the litter, I know. Yes. We already know here in Atlanta. And I will definitely tell you because we used to do all the photography at 
Club Marad, Jazzy Tees, Vegas Nights, um, the industry. And it was another one that used to be downtown. And I can't remember the name of the club, but we used to do all the photography, you know, when 112 and um, what's the group ah, the, with the twins in it and uh, J, uh, Jermaine Dupri. And all, they would all come up in there is what I'm saying. And we would do the photography for we saw stuff. So when I'm sitting up here saying stuff, I'm like, oh, I know what I saw. OK, did we see underage? No, I cannot say that we saw underage because if it was underage coming into the club, they had to go through a check portion. I'm not saying they didn't have fake IDs, but what I'm saying is I didn't see yeah, it was Jack. I did not see that, but it was a lot of boning going on and it was a lot of girl on girl on stage. And yes, when we did the um, photography for Club Mirage and Decatur, yes, there were a lot of, they were, it was the male strippers and yes, some of them were gay. Okay. So when they would come in Jazzy T's, yep. Jazzy T's baby. Okay, because all the rappers would go into Jazzy T's. Okay, and so it has been to see this come full circle. Forget, oh, don't, come in, don't come in here with that. Somebody talking about some watch yourself. No, you watch yourself. Don't come in here trying to threaten this. Like, you must, be, I know you telling the truth. Then we got some trolls talking about some watch yourself. Now, y'all watch, you watch yourself. Watch myself for what? Because I told the truth of what I saw. That's, yeah, that's Club Kaya. That's Club a low key threat. I don't, I don't like that. No, we don't do that. Okay, either. watch myself because what I saw, I know what I saw. I know what we did, what we were doing. We were the photographers for those nightclubs. Okay, we saw what we saw, you know. And, but like I said, we honestly never saw underage. You know, I want to make sure that that's because those un, we the clubs wouldn't allow underage if they didn't have the proper ID. OK, so that that I can definitely attest to. And every now and then we would do an event uh, where we did the photography. Now, mind you, this was 1994, 19 to all the way to 2000 that we so did. the you got, that, you got that. See, I wouldn't even know because in 94, I was one years old. So, yes, like and I kept telling them, even when it comes to even when it comes to Candy Burris and her freak offs and shit, the freaky shit she do with Todd and all those. I kept telling y'all, like, it's a Atlanta <laughs> underground sex scene, Kurt, Rashid, all that shit. Oh, it's it's the swinger scene. But the thing about Candy is she's open. So she, so that can't nobody get nothing on her because she's always been open about who she was. And because she's been open about who she was, she turned it into money. Okay? She turned it into money. She's like, hey, we're going to have a dungeon. So because she's been straight up, don't nobody mess with her. But who they mess with is T.I. and Tiny, allegedly. Remember in California when they were driving down the street because they was popping pills. So, mm, hello. Remember, they was about to be arrested. Sure was. Okay. So what does that tell you? That tells you something then that they've been, this has been going on for a long time. And this is not that it is not not news. This has always been out there. So it's just that who you know, where you know, where you see it, and how it's coming out. We were in the club scene for eight and a half years doing the photography, and we saw a lot. Men and women. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. A lot of y'all need to look at your favorite adult male performers the famous male strippers some of them got some of them got a tv show now y'all need to watch the day they go both ways too yes yes even, even in the atlanta like sex clubs even um what's the one tokyo valentino or tokyo are you talking about what's the one that's uh what's that club called what's that club it's a uh, you got tokyo no there's one on full industrial uh ah uh, it's a swingers club oh um it's a uh, uh it's a swingers club. Uh I've been there, so I know. Uh, it's been there for years. It's been there for years. Uh oh my god, I can't believe I forgot the name I'm of it. it I'm gonna pull it up because but, like, but it's off of Fulton Industrial and Trapeze. Yes, thank you. Trapeze, it's trapeze. Uh they will be up in there, but it's not so much as that. I can definitely tell you back in the day, everybody was down low you know it was like the men were you know everybody came here because of the strippers right it was all about stripping here in atlanta 
And then it was the DL brothers, of course, when Oprah Winfrey had bought, you know, she brought the DL on a DL. That was a book that was written out, this guy she had on the show. And then it was, you know, and I'm I'm for each his own. If that's your flow, if that's the boat you float, so be it, be proud of it. But what I'm saying is don't be sitting up here trying to sleep with women and you gay. You're a gay male and they don't know you gay. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what the stuff. Be open that you're bisexual because it's so, and I keep telling, and, and listen, you know, I've been on the swinger scene. If y'all watch the show, I don't hide that because it wasn't going to be Nan, uh, Nan, uh, uh, body out there trying to expose me. And what I learned, and I, did something. And, and I, and I learned, and I learned all about the swinger scene while I was living in Atlanta because I had never tried this shit beforehand. Going into those clothes, what I learned was at least in the Atlanta scene, like it ain't really no sh like straight gay, but it's all mixed and intermingled. And people don't think that they are uh, gay if they're not receiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of times they will. I, I've even seen, especially in Tokyo Valentino, they would have the the strippers on the third level. And so the first time I went. I seen the female strippers. Okay, cool. Some of them OnlyFans girls. Okay, whatever. But then before I knew it, then I, I I went back another time. Then I seen wait, it's niggas in here stripping too. Wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, what? And the niggas wasn't dancing on the women. They they was dancing for the niggas. And these were these was football player looking niggas. Now I seen. I seen the, the female strippers, the male strippers, and I would see them perform. So they would do like a sex show live. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. That's like watching porn live. Okay, whatever. But then that would end. And then the the, the nigga, he got dollars in his thing. And he stripping for the guys would be it's it's I will definitely say, because I'm 56, I will definitely say that from 94, 93. Uh, because I was here for Freak Nick and stuff like that when I came down to finish college. I definitely will say the time has definitely changed. Okay. And when I say that, it because before everybody was they like they were not out in the open for sure. They they definitely was not out in the open. Okay. Um, everybody was definitely scared, they were afraid to lose their jobs, this and the other. Now it's about acceptance. If that's who you are, that's who you are. Yeah. OK, and it, a lot of people I will definitely say it was a lot of swingers club back in the day. I can definitely uh, attest to. I was, I was told that shit, too, by like the, the grown older people. They like, oh, boy, this ain't shit now. Nah. They was like back in the day, just like with trapeze, especially after the pandemic, like they shut down a pool. It used to be one big ass pool. And then even with trapeze, I learned like, OK, this is the public area. But then you got our B.I. You got the good food. You got the B.I. Oh, good ass food. You hear me? Good ass food. Good food. Okay. Good food. Damn the sex. Pay the food. People went in there just to chill. Okay. Chill. And, it, and honestly, after you go a few times, you start making friends and you ain't even, you might fuck at the end of the night, but y'all really just catching up, eating good. You bring your own drinks. But like, I yes, you I will be. I even peeked into like the VIP area and the VIP area was bomb. And they're like, yeah, you know, it's like, I think the membership now was like 400 or 1600 to go to the V. Anyway, I say all this to say it goes down in Atlanta. <laughs> I will say this. If Diddy was, uh, was honest about and to circle this back to how it used to be and how it is now. If Diddy was honest about who he was, a lot of this would not be happening to him right now because he's not living in his truth. That is the honest. That's where this all comes down to. Back in the day, it was not accepted. It is accepted now. If that's who you are, that's who you are. But because he is 50 plus, he, he's like, um, no, nah, because that's going to tarnish my reputation. That's going to tarnish who I am. Don't nobody and, care. Instead of just being at this point, the, yes, are people going to make fun of you? They're going to still make fun of you. They're still going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people are not going to be the way that they used to be. Ba back in the day, if a dude was gay and he pushed up on a guy, he was getting a beat down. Okay? 
I he was getting a beat too. <laughs> okay, yeah. he would get a beat down. Yeah. Not to say that some of that still doesn't go on per se now, but it's not as much. And Diddy would have actually possibly created a whole new level of acceptance if he had lived in his own truth and said, "You know what? I'm by." Okay. Um, if he would have just said that and then everybody would like, okay, because don't nobody really care. Oh, okay. P Diddy. Oh, okay. Because the guys, instead of all the innuendos and you threatening everybody, but because he wants to live in that lie, it's his way of trying to control other people mm -hmm. by them not telling their truth or being who they are because he's living a lie. That's what it all comes down to. That's what, that's what it comes down to. Because I remember when Little Nas X did his BET performance and he kissed that dude at the BET Awards. Diddy made a post and was like, I love what you're doing. Like, it was, you could read through it where it was like, damn, I wish I could be out like that. But Diddy, you can. You can be out. Like, dude, you can. And you know the even craziest thing? By the way, how do I say your name? Is it P. Weezy? How do I say it's it? Pussycat Talk Podcast. Pussycat Talk Podcast. All right. I just subscribed to you because you you have earned your spot over here. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Um, matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna be you. like you. You will, you will. I'm gonna put your podcast while you while we're talking. Thank you, baby. Um, the crazy thing is, Pussycat, the crazy thing is, as long as you the top, black folks don't care. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's that's that's what I mean by not living in your truth. If you if he lived in his truth, every you know who actually get away with it truthfully is two people. Somebody mm -hmm. brought their name up: Eddie Murphy and Queen Latifah. Yes, because they got so much swag in what they do. Both of them, it's like we don't care. So what? So if Diddy adopt, but but then again, you know, because he was, you know, allegedly Eddie was with uh, Johnny. OK, um, you know, they had a relationship forever. OK, allegedly. So I Eddie don't loves know. the trans girls. I don't know why they try to act like they don't. Eddie loves the trans girls. Well, you know, he got his beard. He's married to his beard and stuff like that. You know, so it's uh, so the question I have for you is and even for Jag, when you get to a certain level. Mm -hmm. of making certain type of money and you evidently you get so bored because there was a video with jay-z um on to the next one on uh, and all you saw was demon stuff i was like oh i can't even follow you no more because it was a black and white video so when you get to that point and you know claim it's illuminati and you sell i mean d where is it that you decide to sell your soul when do you it's like that level of do you not going yeah she I'm, I'm problematic do you not think that what you're doing is not going to come back on you did puffy thought he was invincible that that's now that's what i don't know now from what i've been told by a, a witch in the industry she's like she was like well you know it's not that everybody's selling their soul i'm like okay well, what did break break it down to me from what she's saying, and this is a witch that was telling me this, she said, you have certain people that just make deals with dark entities. And the dark entities attach themselves to them. Correct. And it, it's true. with them at all times and gives them the ability to do things a little bit supernatural. She said, but in the agreement you made, she told me, she said, contracts on this side are just like contracts on the other side. Mm -hmm. You have to uphold whatever you agree to. And if you break that contract, then you have consequences. Correct. Correct. So I do. I'm wondering, I'm wondering when they don't uphold whatever agreement with their entities, if that's why the people around them start to die and suffer. Well, in P. Diddy's case, I don't think that was the actual case. P. Diddy crossed somebody, period. Point yeah. Yeah. He crossed someone, okay? And that someone has so much power. And again, if you notice how all of a sudden, um, what was it, Ethiopia, Ethiopia the, mm -hmm. the, the white guy, the rumor will is the white guy would come and see Diddy. They would go behind and leave for about an hour or two, okay? Leave for about an hour or two and then come back out, okay? So at the end of the day, the spirits or whatever it is that they decided to do, okay, um, they did that. They chose that. 
you didn't have enough confidence within yourself to think that you could do it without that particular entity. Um, whether it's white magic or black magic, whatever it is that you want to call it, um, whether it's manifestation, okay, you called upon it. And in order to get that off, you definitely got to use the Reiki to remove that spirit, um, that negative energy from you because it is attached to you. But at the end of the day, we have to look at ourselves and say, okay, you know, when I look at my generation, Generation X, and then look at the millennials and look at the baby boomers, did we, you know, our parents told us, go to school, get a good job, so you make the money, okay? I had to tell my sons now, hey, you don't have to, although they did, you can create your wealth another type of way, but have integrity about it. Don't sell your soul. Don't sell you're, you know, because at the end of the day, you will regret it in the end. And it will always, what's in the dark, always come to light. That's what P. Diddy forgot. That's what Jay-Z is forgetting. That's what Beyonce is beginning, forgetting. What's in the dark will come to light. If you, you remember, the reciprocity happens when you do, uh, do unto others or they would do unto you. So if you, you got all this wealth, but at some point you're going to have to pay. You got to pay for it. You're going to have to pay the piper at some point. So, R. Kelly had to pay the piper. Jay Z is getting ready to pay the piper, and let's see how he gets out of this whole situation. Puffy, because who is he going to turn to? He ain't that stupid. From December, I hope he's not. From December until right now, to not gotten rid of or put aside evidence not within the house. And then we talk about the dang tunnels. Like, really? So you bought the house for the tunnels. You didn't buy it for nothing else. You bought it for the tunnels, baby. Okay? Let's make sure we understand that. The hundred million, the, the money that he got on the house, remember, he got uh, loans on how he had to get the loan because he, he had to get liquid so he could pay Cassie. They sit up here saying 30 million. No, she got paid a hundred. I think she probably did get paid about a hundred. I think so too. Because the attorney had to get they 30 million. Off top. Okay. And they wanted it in cash. They didn't want no shares. No, they no, no. That. No. They won't throw me the money. Okay. Give me my money. They say, and Diddy is Haitian descent. Well, yes, then that means he is honestly. Uh, if that is the case, you know, whether you're Creole, I'm Creole, Haitian, then yes, you are using magic. But I don't think, uh, and if you look at his mama, his mama sometimes looked like a witch. I don't know if you guys know. Oh, know she that. does. She does. Okay. Uh, allegedly. So I want to make sure I say that because I don't want you to get demonetized on something I'm saying. But allegedly looks like a witch sometimes if you pull her up, you know, and again, she taught him. She taught him. He saw things. She did. Okay. I'm gonna show y'all too the crossroads ritual. We'll let me know in the in the comments if y'all want me to discuss with y'all the meaning of crossroads spiritually, because in a lot of music they speak about the crossroads, typically going to the crossroads to make an agreement for fame, fortune, whatever. Hold up, y'all. And look at that on to the next one video yeah, from Jay Z. Crossroads. Y'all know the song Crossroads, showing you how they get their fame and fortune. It's all over in their music and everything. Crossroads. Look at their name with the bone. That represents Papa Legba, the dog. Mm. I got to learn how to put stuff together. Okay, because they speaking through things, but you got to know how to put it to fuck together. When Bone Thugs in Harmony, they start playing with that Ouija board. They asked. I said they asked the question. They asked, how can I get fame and fortune? That's the question that they wanted to know. The spirits came through that Ouija board and told them about the crossroads. Told them about the owner of the crossroads. And they did what? They did exactly what they needed to do to meet with the owner of the fucking crossroads. Catch that on fleek. Y'all remember in the song, I'm about to break it down. Y'all remember in the song where they ask, they said, Mr. Ouija, come on now, y'all know it. They said, Mr. Ouija, they said, Mr. Ouija I want to know my future. Ask in the Ouija board. I told you that a Ouija board, you can go to it to ask a question on what you wanted to know. So they went to Mr. Ouija. 
And they said, Mr. Ouija. Hold up. I found something else I want y'all to see. Hold up real quick. Let's see. And if you can, Storm, uh -huh. if you can bring on that on to the next one with Jay-Z. Oh, my God. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Okay. I literally stopped following him after watching that because it freaked me out so bad. I was like, do they not see what is in this video? All kinds of occultic stuff. Uh, oh. okay. Play this real quick. Try and find his biological father, while others believe that he was exclusively focusing on improving his craft. But the other theory, and strangely the most popular one, is that Robert Johnson made a deal with the devil. The story goes that Robert Johnson went to a local crossroads with his guitar before midnight. He started playing his songs, and at midnight, the devil appeared. The devil took the guitar and tuned it, played a song, and gave it back to Johnson. This was the transaction, the turning point for Johnson as a musician. He had given up his soul to the devil himself and was a master of guitar. But with this, his soul was doomed to hell and an untimely demise was in his future. The reason people believe that this is what happened is because of a man named Liddell Johnson, who in 1971 said that this was the way to sell your soul and that his brother Tommy had actually done this. There was no relation between Tommy and Robert, but that didn't stop people from taking this tale and attaching it to Robert's name. At least that's how the story goes. It's obviously a far-fetched tale, but it shows us how impressive and quick Johnson's improvement must have been. The All right, so we'll leave that there. Let's go to on to the next one. I can't play the sound, of course, but this- Of course be not. Of course not. Yeah, we don't want nothing happening to you. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oof. It's getting ready to come. Why is the black over the mouth? It's, it's so crazy because just some of the, yeah, it, it, I was just like crazy to me. I was just like, oh no. I was watch. I was literally watching it in my living room, and I, when I tell you something came over me, I was like, "Oh, okay." I'm done. Done. Nope. I said, Maybe "I'm done. done," and I was like, "That's my jam." On to the next one. On to I was like, "Oh no, they throwing stuff all in this." It was like some uh the the ram thing or something. It was something in it. I was just like, "I don't play around with stuff like that," okay because I know the power being Creole of what it can do. And if you're consistently, uh, my son will not listen to, uh, although that's my jam, uh, the fate, uh, what's his name, what's his future and uh, Kendrick. He's like, mama is doing something because you can't stop moving to that particular song. Mm -hmm. It's something about that song that you can't stop moving. And the beat, I said, but those are old beats. I know those beats. I said, that's, you know, easy E and, you know, some other stuff. He's like, no, mommy, it's something wrong. So when you have that clairvoyant spirit and you can tell that something is not right, then you need to move away from it. OK, and all of this that he is doing from Diddy, from using the pink cocaine, the allegedly, because I want to make sure we say that the pink cocaine. Right. Um, the lacing. Think about uh, all them people that bought Ciroc. OK, and mm -hmm. he were at the parties and he laced. This is this is a good vodka. OK, N waking up blacked out and not knowing where you are from a one drink or two. Come on now. They say they say from the first drink. And speaking of that dark imagery, don't y'all remember this? Hold up. That the yeah. anti-diary film? Yep. From I'm, uh, from Rihanna. I'm gonna play this one part, then we're gonna go back. She, All of them got to a billionaire status. But I will say Rihanna does keep herself pretty separate from them. And so does Kanye. And I just thought it was super duper funny how P. Diddy and his son went to go see uh Kanye. He remember. remember he was laughing at Kanye because he felt like he was being, you know, gone. Kanye yeah. said, I ain't gone nowhere. And Kanye was like, I ain't talking to you. I will not talk to you. Okay. Because remember what Kanye said? He said, oh, they came by me. They don't control me. They may control Jay-Z. They may control LeBron. They, you know, Diddy. I ain't, at least I ain't off nobody. He said it right there. Yeah. 
He said it right there. So Kanye may be a whole lot of stuff, but evidently he wasn't riding with that. Because if you notice, none of their names were said in any of the lawsuits. You're right. You know, there are a lot of people's names that weren't in the lawsuit. Okay. Yeah, and, and they better hope that it don't come out. But then watch Stevie J sitting up here dropping evidence, evidence, okay? Evidence of everybody at the party. But so, so you trying to sit up here and say, first of all, that was his 50th birthday party. So hell yeah, everybody gonna be there. So of all the videos to show, why are you gonna show a different video? Why you show the 50th? The, the dang old videographer was on point. Okay. It was a great video. Why you why you didn't show the other parties that he has done to show proof of what don't go down? You show his 50th birthday party. Then you want to put the victory video out. I said that was forth telling because that was 94, 95. Was. That was a forth telling video that they after you. So are you telling your own situation of what's transpiring? But you may not come out victorious in this one, baby. Mm -mm. Might be it. I want you to, uh, one final point to wrap up, tell the people where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at PKT Podcast, Pussycat Talk Podcast. Thank you, sweetheart. I just love you. I've been following you on my personal page, but uh, and I'm following you now on here, and, and I'm subscribed to you as well. So if you haven't subscribed to Storm, please subscribe to Storm. Join his community. Hit the join button. And I ain't seen none of y'all drop no super chats in the chat for my boy. He working hard. Can y'all please drop some super chats in the chat for my boy? He working hard bringing y'all the content whether it's a dollar two dollar five dollar ten dollar can we drop my boy something because he's straight up bringing y'all the information at least join his community and i thank you so much for having me love you bless you and, and much continued success for everything that you do everything you. all right baby all right bye-bye bye baby oh yeah she dropped tea I know that was the longest two minutes, but listen, she dropped she dropped some good tea. She dropped some good tea. All right, what's going on, Tanel? Oh, wait, you're muted. You're muted. Uh, okay. Thank you, Miss. I was trying to drop a chat, but here I am. I'm here with you now. Okay. Thank you for that. My head is hot. I I what can I add after that? Except there was a part that somebody talked about. Um the fact that um, Diddy is living out perhaps his father's um, yeah. legacy, right? Perhaps he's playing a role. And one of the things, so much of this is upsetting. I'm in the age, I'm 48. So I'm in this age group of like watching these people create mythology around manhood, around black manhood, creating what hip hop should be, not letting the Bahamadias and the, the, you know, all of the people who could actually have a message, a real, um, seeing Jaguar made me think of Bahamadia. And oh, thank you, Jaguar. Thank you for the interviews you've done with her. Um, I'm sure it feels great. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it feels great in this time now to see so many things, so many things being proven beyond a reasonable, what do you have to say now? No one can say anything from the things. And anybody who felt like they grew up in my generation, like, why is this what's sold to us? Why is this what's the hottest thing ever? Why is this what we should uh, uh, um, want for ourselves? Why is this what is affirmed? And it's not by happenstance, like to look back and see, no, you're actually killing off people, killing their careers, Allegedly, yeah. maybe should I, should I say allegedly? Um, taking their money, um, killing their spirit. I heard someone say, when you're not an artist, all you can do, because you know, consuming content all around this has been really interesting to hear what people have to say and then to go back and watch things that you watch and it's like, mm hmm. Um, but when you're not an artist, when you don't have a creative spirit, all you can do is be demonic in your effort to to quell that, to quash that, to, to not let the message of uplift, upliftment because music is so powerful. You can entrain people so deeply through a beat. And the fact that they choose to put what they choose to put over a beat and feed that into our psyches and we, oh honey, I can't take this call. 
sorry, love, um, and feed that into us. And I just realized that's somebody who's supposed to be coming to my house. I just hung up on them, but I'm gonna, I know we only have two minutes. I'm just gonna say, it's so interesting that this is all coming out and these people who are living in um, a lack of truth, because that's the other thing. Uh, homosexuality, being gay, that should not be vilified in the way that it is and hidden. And the the cross section of uh, people consuming this because mm, Diddy, mm -hmm, we knew he was freaky. No, what's what's <laughs> horrible about Diddy is he was not living in truth. Y'all hit on that too. If he had come out and said, "This is who I am," there's no telling what he could have done so that we could lose these illusions of what masculinity is. There's no telling how far he could have taken gay rights black rights all of this Ooh. download doesn't need to exist if we don't have this hyper masculine this hyper masculine presentation that isn't even true because you don't feel this way genuinely about a woman so you aren't express i mean maybe you're bisexual so you might feel that way about women and men but it seems like there's an anger and a need to possess mm -hmm. and a need to humiliate that has nothing to do with love that has nothing to do with um a physical representation of 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 true companionship it's about owning and possessing and violating whether right. it be man or woman and so the fact that he's put this out there and has been this this arbiter of filth and 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 we now aspire to this that's the word i was looking for the fact that this is what you know all that take that take that and all of this dripping you know there's they're so bereft of anything inside but yet they wrap it all in diamonds and gold and gilded nothing. And this is what we've been fed purposefully, not accidentally. The people who are falling off are not falling off because that's not what we wanted to consume. They're being hung off of buildings and right. robbed and allegedly. And, and, and just thank you for the content. I got to go. I'm going to hit my super chat. This man, thank you, Jaguar. For keep talking. I know some people don't like what you say. But man, they, uh, 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 <laughs> take it easy it, now. It's looking true. It's looking. It's looking mighty true. So, have Good a night. great rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, last person, Ashley Martinez. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good. I want to say first, thank you everybody for the super chats. I'm not able to read because it, it it all went so fast. To so Shamise that asked for thoughts on Beyonce. Just rewind a little bit. We talked about Beyonce, but thank you to Jackson Legacy, Tasha, Kaya, uh, let's see who else, S. Goodwin, uh, Pangalanko, anybody I missed. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, wait, it's all right here. Thank you to Black Mama Cita, Leon, Jay, Frankie, Melanie, Deacon, Adrian, Nina, Alejandro, Kay, Ash, Ratchet, Buddha. All right, go ahead, Ashley, what's your thoughts tonight? Hi, so I want to thank you first for your content. Super, super awesome to like hear just everybody kind of coming together in the community to just expose what's been going on. I guess. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to know if you had heard about anybody named Jonathan Adi. Wait, I, Jonathan Adi. So he was the guy that got arrested for shooting up like the Trump Towers. It was something that had taken place with him. But he was also a former Diddy free golf worker. Oh. And there was an interview and everything that he had. He looked like he was dressed in a medical, you know, like he was dressed in a medical suit of some kind, like he had gotten arrested or put, placed somewhere. Okay. And there were two people interviewing him. And asking him a whole bunch of questions, but reports, I just find it sketchy. I thought it was something maybe you'd want to look into eventually because there were reports that came out that he had passed. And then I looked up his case record and he's still alive and well. And mm. he is in Miami prison and his next hearing is this month. Hold up, Jonathan Adi. Are you talking about, wait, let me share the screen because we can come back later tonight and do a reaction to this video. Are you talking about this interview right here? Yes. Yes. That first one, yes. Okay. I'm going to leave that there. We will come back to that this evening. We'll leave that there. I just wanted to share that because that that is like some piece that I just kept thinking. I'm like, well, if they want to put reports out that he has and he's still living, 
they're probably trying to cover up something, but maybe he's already working with the feds and kind of has, you know, yeah. the big P on the city. But damn. Yeah. Again, okay. Storm, I appreciate you so much. Absolutely. Your Thank you. Your content is wonderful. And I appreciate for you for letting me even speak. Thank you. Absolutely. You have a good weekend. All right. You as well. Bye bye. Thank you to everybody that came up. I didn't even expect Jaguar to actually hit the link, believe it or not. But, um, oh, damn, y'all still send the Super Chats. Thank you to Shamise again. Uh, the DV said, thank you for having a space where people feel safe. Thank you. Layla Monroe said, this live is everything. Serious conversations are covered. Yes. Yeah, I got to rename it. Make sure I add in Jaguar's name that she she joined. Um, love your content, Storm Love for Montreal. Thank you so much. Listen, I love y'all. I got to get up out of here because I, I got to get something to eat. I got to hit the gym. I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, but we will be back tonight. We will do a reaction to that video. I want to I wanna do a reaction to that Harley initiated video too. But they was talking about masculinity. If y'all care, we'll, we'll, yeah, maybe, maybe not. But uh, thank you, Spring 20E. Okay. Well, my, my bad if I misinterpreted what you had said earlier. It just it looked, you know, looked a little funky. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I will catch you all later. Uh,